It's uh, 6.05 p.m. on May 22nd, 2023. I'd like to call the meeting to order for the Woodbury Select Board. Any adjustments to the Select Board agenda? It's published. I have a little something to add uh, that I forgot to put on here. I don't know if that needed an adjustment, but it's a Lister's request for an extension that they have to do every year and it just needs to be signed by the chair of the selectmen. Okay. Uh, we'll wait and do that at the end of the meeting. Okay, don't let me forget or I'll be in trouble. Just walk. <laughs> Some place where I can't lose track. Thank you. Something they do every year. Just, there's just no way they can get all their work done by, by the, date. the time that the state wants them to. Uh, next item on the agenda is to approve bills and payroll orders. We have gone through payroll. We haven't finished the bills. We'll do that immediately following the meeting. Uh, the minutes from the previous meeting. Oh, I made a mistake. Here. Which is not June 8th. It should be May 8th. May 8th. Uh, were reviewed and signed by the select board. And now we are open for public comment. And public, just for your information, Giselle, public comment is for people who are not here for something that's already on the agenda. Oh, I thought we were waiting for the Sheriff's Department. Yeah, well, yeah, that too, but... <laughs> okay. What happened to the other chair? Who's that chair for? Huh? Who is that chair for? That, this was for the Sheriff's. The hot seat. Got the, an inquisition? Yeah. yeah. Well, we can move it back. Everybody else is too afraid to sit. They have to sit in the back row. Most people do, but they, the sheriffs, they won't be like that. They'll be right up there. Well, let's, uh, let's just go ahead and skip forward until the uh, representative from Washington Sheriff's Department mm -hmm. comes here. Um, is that okay with everybody? Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, we're supposed to be at 625, but can we have the town treasurer's report, please? Yeah. Over the last two weeks, cash receipts, I took in $1,130. Delinquencies, $700. We had three direct deposit transfers, all from the state of Vermont. One was for the library grant for the reading, summer reading grant. Uh, traffic fines was $177.50. And recording, they're now doing electronic. Uh, three hundred ninety dollars, and today I transferred sixty-six thousand from the money market to the checking. Payroll, last two weeks, uh, nine thousand thirty-one dollars and forty-eight cents. Accounts payable, sixty-five thousand forty-eight dollars and eighty-nine cents. Um, so VLCT um, has set up this amazing um, training mm, portal. It's called NeoGov. So I can set up categories for all employees. So the guys at the road crew, um, and there's over a hundred webinars. Most of them are 30 minutes long. You take a test and you get certified. Um, last week I did an, it was an OSHA incident um, so if, nice. like the instant of Greg getting hurt over at the shop, what do you do, what do you look for, um, and all that goodies. Mm -hmm. And so it's, there's a bunch for the guys could do, there's a bunch for office, any of the select board, all the classes are free, and then you print out your little certification. Um, so anybody who wants one, I can set up an account. I'm the admin of it. I'd like an account. Um, Please. And so I can... The board can either make a decision saying, hey, I want you know, this done for the highway, I want this done for the office, um, and then I just put it all each class and I can check their status, I can check what's been done. It's pretty cool. So there's no charge? There is no charge. Really? Mm -hmm. Can this be done like at any time or is it scheduled? Yeah, they're just no, and if you want digital something comes up, you have to you can pause the class and Mm -hmm. 
I'm pretty sure I already signed up for it. Um, Ms. Randy, I would love for, yeah. as the admin, I'd love for every employee in the select board to just have an account. Yep. So I've established I, Robin and Pam so far. You have to pick but your I have to do the guys password. Absolutely. Yeah, I Correct. think that every So I will put your email and then they'll send you a link and then you have to put in a password, your own. Um, mm -hmm. But as admin, I can see everybody's. Which is great. Which is, I think it is, educational trainings for free. Mm -hmm. Super. It's pretty cool. Yeah, just take advantage of it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say let's make it pointed. So everybody has access. Yep. All Agreed. I think it's a great thing. That's great. Thank you. Hmm. Other things, questions for me? Well, there was um, the generator. Was yeah. Open. So there needs to be a decision made by the board how we're going to proceed. So in that packet, there's three pages. There's your contract. Yep. There is. Um, the questions that I asked Brookfield that they got back to us, and then the quote. Right. Um, and your financial statements due to Dufrom, we do have money that um, that's still in the part of the of the school maintenance fund that was given to us by OSSU a couple years ago. Right. Um, I don't see the, yeah, the quote in here. Oh, well, maybe not. Yeah. Then no. It's just the no. correspondence. It might have been from I do have the old. Have I do. I mean, that quote hasn't changed. No. Right. Three thousand. Yeah. Um, but they were. They were really not very helpful. I'm glad that you talked to them. They were very. They were not very helpful when I talked to them. Oh, sorry. But I'm glad you talked to them, and you found them helpful. Uh, well, they didn't well, change anything. Really. It basically. I can. I can share this. We don't this is the original. Okay. This is the original quote. Yeah. 3,038.17. What did they say that was not helpful? Did they just... Oh, it was not helpful. Uh, when I... I don't know. You can probably speak better to this than I can, but... No, it's just the email, same email that I forwarded to you guys, and it, we don't get much for a contract. Our contract doesn't really cover much, and so when we're out of contracts, all of a sudden there are all these things they identified as being problematic, but it has not been running. That was my main complaint. Right. That when we needed it, it wasn't running, and we did have a service contract on it. Um, and they basically told me that. Yeah. So is is this because there was a lapse in the contract because they no. had sent us the wrong? Okay. Yeah, no, good. Okay. Good. No. Okay. Good. No. The lapse just, in I contract you just was. Said we were out of contract. The lapse in contract was after we had a problem with the generator. Okay. Anyway, we still have to deal with it. So, All right. um, uh, I'm in favor of uh, basically signing off on three thousand thirty-eight dollars and seventeen cents as quoted by Brookfield Services. Uh, so I'll make that three thousand thirty-eight okay. seventeen cents. Uh, so I'll make that motion to approve this. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And it can come out of that school. That's up to you guys. Well, no, it should come out of the OSSU money that we were okay. we were already yeah. given. Yep. Because we're splitting those costs. Do you need another motion for that? Uh no, we shouldn't okay. get another motion. No, when I do bills, you'll see that we'll it'll see come it. out of that mm -hmm. account. Is there another contract that we need to sign? No. Really? Okay. No. Great. Okay. Well, it sucks, but that's what we're doing. So I'll call in the morning. Thank you. I do appreciate it. Um, well, we're moving right along. Can we <laughs> s sneak a skip in here? Oh, Either that or we can move on to the road commissioner's report. Mm. And skip, skip for now. <laughs> Which one's going to be lengthier? Draw, straw? Well, this, is, this is pretty straightforward. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Skip, yeah. are you up for just sure. showing ahead with it? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Okay. So, after last yeah. select board meeting, 
I took a look at these two ordinances again and made sure, and I sent an email telling you guys what I did. And I sent that email last Monday with the two updated ordinances. Mm -hmm. So as it said in the email, it said I edited the approval process because that's changed somewhat. And I kind of thought it might due to the pandemic. Uh, and that was attached to my email as well. I don't think I got my email. This copy that I have is still amended May 9th, and it has the old select board name. No, no. I sent it on May 15th at 9.15 a.m. to Diana, Chris, and to Lizzie, to I saw it. sit in I town court and yeah. write a direct copy. I didn't send it to you. But I saw it, yes. So, the document from VLCT is just a synopsis of how to put forward an ordinance so it'll hold water mm -hmm. in, a, in a trial. And I also, as the email stated, did a cursory check of the VSA titles, titles and chapters and subchapters, and they all seem to be Those pertinent seem to, match to the, from our original. They do. And I ask, you know, please call with questions. So that being said, I sent the two documents to you folks. Mm -hmm. And here they are. If you want me to resend them to you, <coughs> excuse me, Diana, I will. If well, if they're different. Um, they are different. They are different. Okay. They have changed. Yeah. Right, I can resend them to you tomorrow morning. Thank you. I still have some comments, so I'll send you here. OK. And uh, as my last sentence in my email, you know, I'm not an attorney. You know, I do research okay. So well, maybe I did say that. And <laughs> so I research these and I feel somewhat confident, mm -hmm. not being an attorney, that these fall in line with the chapter and sections of... I'm not an attorney either, but I cross-reference as best I could yeah. based on the old document and the one that you sent, yeah. and I didn't see any discrepancies. Mm -hmm. I didn't. And I'm a decent researcher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with that, you know, you could call up the League of Cities and Towns and talk to one of their attorneys yep. and send them these documents for a cursory check and see what they say. That, that would be my advice. Didn't you say you already had our attorney look at it when you first drafted these? Yeah, but it was back in 2017. That was, that was, that was the old version. Yeah, yeah. And that was the old version. So these have been updated. Yeah. They've, been, they've been gone through a bit. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Come, Come on in, please. Um, Are you by yourself? I am. Brett is somewhere between here and St. Johnsbury, and uh, on his way. He's probably not going to make it. So oh. that's okay. I apologize for being a little bit late. Too many moving parts, and he sent okay. me to the clerk's office first. Oh, oh. sorry. <laughs> Please, quite all right. We're just finishing up one other item of business. Mm -hmm. um, so that will do that. Yeah. I'll go. I'll go to BLCT. I'll just pass that last draft by them. But Diane, I probably want your comments. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So can I just yeah. answer those? Sure. Well, you mean you want me to write them out? No, I, I didn't write them out. Okay. Um, Do I need to write them out? Well, no. I mean, let me just talk these over with Skip. And yeah. For example, under section two on the first page. First page of which document? Which one? The, 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 the domestic or the domestic? The domestic pet one. Page two. Domestic. Thanks for sharing the sample. Okay. Please write the Okay. The use of, uh, under Section 2C, public nuisance, it talks about uh, domestic pet or pet which unreasonably annoys, injures, disturbs, or intrudes upon the free or comfortable use of public lands in Woodbury is a public nuisance. And, um, and um, is that later it says in the next section, which is also about enumeration of public nuisances, finally it does say repeatedly, continuously, or habitually allowed or permitted to bark in an excessive continuing manner so as to interfere, interfere with the reasonable use and enjoyment of neighboring premises. So that I'm not clear. Well, whether a public so, nuisance is on public land or Could you read the anywhere. first part of that again? I'm sorry? Could you read the first part of that again, please? 
A public nuisance is any continuing or often repeated conduct by a domestic pet or pet or wolf hybrid which unreasonably annoys, injures, disturbs, or intrudes upon the free or comfortable use of public lands in Woodbury is a public nuisance, including acts specifically enumerated and defined in this ordinance. That's why it's so confusing, because the first definition says pub public lands only, but then further on it does refer to neighboring premises. So, section two is just definitions. Enumeration, you know, enforces or spells out what those definition definitions really mean. Right. So a nuisance dog or wolf hybrid dog is a public nuisance when, and it gives, I want to say, five stipulations of when mm -hmm. that animal could be mm -hmm. deemed a public nuisance. I think Diana's question is about the term public lands. Okay. That's okay. why... The definition of public nuisance there. has to do with public land, and then, but then there are these other... Right. And this it's is, just confusing. This is taken right from, you know, VSA statute. It, no, that's, it matches VSA statute. Yeah, it does. So, however, those folks choose, chose to do this back when they won this law. They know. set it up this way. Good luck. Is this based on the, uh, the earlier ordinance that we passed? Well, it was amended, first adopted, if you look at the, uh, right. the heading, first okay. adopted in the year 2000, yeah. amended in 2001, right. uh, amended in 2011, right. and now trying to amend it again. Mm -hmm in 2023. So it is not a totally new, it's... Correct. No, we've taken advantage. Okay, I thought it was going to be totally new. We've, no, we've taken advantage of previous work. Just mm -hmm. no, good. That makes sense if it's good. <laughs> but if there was enough wrong with it, that would... Well, uh, it hasn't been an work. issue of, of of the document. It's been enforcement. Yeah. And there's a reason why it was up here is, I look back in my earlier emails, is in Section 3, Part D and E, we had some abandoned animals, and this ordinance didn't have any reference to abandoned animals. Mm -hmm. So we added sections D and E and section mm -hmm. 3 to uh, talk about abandoned animals and how to deal with them in this ordinance. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Kip, I had a question about the other ordinance um, on page two of that one. Uh, under the section of rams and then also under the section on horses, um, it basically says that they're not allowed to be a nuisance to the neighbors only through certain dates within the year. And I wasn't, I was just curious about that. What page you on again? Uh, so page two, like under it's, Rams, uh, section C. Article two, C. Two C. Yeah. Um, Rams shall not be allowed to go at large between August first and December first in each year, and then similarly, um, later under D two, a person who owns or keeps horses over one year of age between April first and December first in a private enclosure in such a manner as to disturb and annoy the owner. Blah 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 blah. I just, I didn't understand why it's only within certain dates. Again, that's... It's referring to a statute. It's statute. So you can have rams just roaming free and if, unless during those months, right? If, I mean, if we're following state statute, that's... It doesn't mean that we have to. You know, we could eliminate those dates for just right. following state statute. So if that's something that people are concerned about, we can, we can eliminate those and just... Yeah. Say, Graham shall not be allowed to go at large. Well, may I? Yeah. Please. The reason the state did that is because Rams will impregnate the females during that time, and you don't want somebody else's Ram coming to your females if it's not the breed that you wanted. But it's not, I don't think, a big of an issue, and it's there for a reason because I know like a, some of the biggest sheep farmers down south will let their Rams roam on a mountain in the summertime, mm -hmm. just so that they have a place for the rams to be, yeah. but they're not bothering all the females 
prematurely mm -hmm. and seems to work well and then the farmer goes and gets his rams later on and the ram was living on the mountain so and they didn't even have a dog protecting them because they're you know a ram and they can they can yeah. fend for themselves now maybe two or three hundred years ago maybe not yeah. but now there's no more catamount since 1881 mm -hmm. in Vermont allegedly at least the eastern catamount mm -hmm. and there's no more wolves a coyote is going to think twice before trying to come after mm -hmm. a ram, mm -hmm. so that's why. But I would recommend leaving it the way it is, mm -hmm. um, and that's why I'm here because we don't need any extra rules. The state and the feds already have a lot of rules. If you want to see, there's like manuals this thick on things that you're supposed to do for your animals, so we don't have to make it harder for anybody, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. So less is better is for where I'm coming from. And I'm happy to discuss it at town meeting before we make any changes. Marcial, I'm with you on that 100%. I feel like less is more when it comes to ordinances. So you mean to you. Leave, so it, leave, it alone. leave that three-month period in which the rams can't run wild? And so that stipulation is just August to December? Well, we've heard from the probably the only farmer in Woodbury who has sheep. So, well, maybe not the there was supposed to be a couple of people that are coming that have uh, some other animals too, but I don't see them here. So yes, I'll, I'll go with that. I, I, I don't really want somebody else's ram coming up to my females. I have one female that's too old, oh. and I really don't want her to get pregnant. So I, I've got to figure out how to keep my boys away from her oh. because she, she's too old to get pregnant. Yeah. So it'd be hard if somebody's ram. But I mean, I would probably handle it if I if I saw somebody's ram circling my fence trying to get to my female. I'd try to get it up find out whose it was. So it wouldn't mm -hmm. probably be a big issue for me anyway, mm -hmm. but I think that's why the state did that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, let's leave that stipulation in place then. Mm -hmm. Leave it alone. Mm -hmm. It's a good reason. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Thank you. I found it confusing all of these um, <coughs> references to people who knowingly permit their cattle, horses, sheep, goats, and her permits cattle, horses, sheep, goats, or swine to run at large in a public park or in a townhouse or church <laughs> or burial ground. Uh, I think you now it just seems like willing, willingly, uh, does that really happen? Knowingly? Let their cattle run loose? It has, yeah. Hasn't that happened really recently? Um, I don't know if it was knowingly. That, that's the uh, thing. It's usually okay. an accident. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's usually not knowing what you know. But this does re say here, an owner or keeper of horses more than one year old who willfully or negligently permits horses to run at large. That, that is the only reference to yeah. unwillingly. That's, that, and that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Again, everything in here is quoting state statute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, if we're making modifications, we're doing it knowing that the state that we're going beyond the state statute. Mm -hmm. That's why I thought it was just fun personally. Escapes and rescues. I guess I didn't get that far. Hmm. <laughs> if a beast escapes, it's an unlawfully rescued from a pound. <clears throat> Such beast may, within five days thereafter, be retaken wherever found, and again impounded by the keeper of the pound, or by the person impounding it. Oh, wow. Anyway. Don't play me. No. It's not on you. All right, so, um, any other comments? I'd be curious to hear a little more from Marcial, who is a farmer. So I, um, I'm a little bit conflicted on how I feel about adding any new ordinances at all. Um, I read through these. I thought they were great. I thought you did an awesome job. Um, I have no issues with any of what's in it. Um, but just sort of in general. So I looked on the Callis website, and they have 10 ordinances. Woodbury currently has three. And I feel like it's a slippery slope, adding new rules. And I... I'm a little conflicted as to, you know, whether I think it's a great idea. Um, so as a farmer and as someone who expressed um, interest in keeping rules like that minimal, I'm just curious what you think about it. Well, I have a lot, a lot of thoughts about it. I mean, Vermont used to produce approximately 80% of its food. 
and 20% was brought in, mm -hmm. maybe fancy stuff, white sugar, things like that. Mm -hmm. Partially because of slavery, they were able to have mm -hmm. cheap white sugar. And now, at best, we're doing 20% of our food, we import 80% mm -hmm. of our food. And I've had to be one of those unfortunate people that's had to work off, off farm, and I've picked up and delivered a lot of food from a lot of places, and I've also picked up people's food waste. Uh, not comp well, I've picked up compost too, actually, uh. but I mean the other kind of waste, feces uh. and sewage waste. Um, and I feel like we could do a lot better job with all that waste and all that trucking. And if we had more local food, I mean, everyone talks about local in the store, and it's mm -hmm. kind of cool. And some stores will tell you this is within 100 miles or within 50 miles. But Vermont's not doing a very good job compared to how we used to on producing our own food. So anything at all that would make it harder to make, f to have, make food of our own here is, a, is a, I think, hugely problematic and is probably someday going to catch up to us. But it may not be till my son's generation or his kids. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna, I think we're going we're gonna to pay. We're going to pay the price on losing our self-sufficiency. Us, for one, we scramble. I'm going to admit it. We scramble when there's a power outage. You know, we're, we're dependent on that power pretty badly. Not my animals so much because I love my water and I carry all my food, but in the house, mm -hmm. you know, it's like it's time to get out the candles. And I don't even like that feeling. Um, so I feel like it's kind of like you're at home, you lose power. Do you have a generator? Do you have candles? Do you have flashlights? Do you have a wood stove? Especially in the winter. Do you have a wood stove? We have a little cook wood stove, but it's really not enough to heat my house. So anything more than a few days of no... Uh, electricity and uh, we're cold. Mm. I mean cold. I maybe keep the house at 40, 50. So I feel like that's a weakness that I have and I would never try to point the finger and try to tell someone to do something that I'm not willing to back that up with my own mouth. But I feel like I need to produce more of my own food and having animals is a huge part of that. Um, we got, you know, a good fair amount of cattle. I think the cows, people handle their cows pretty well. Vermont used to have a lot more sheep. I think they're a little more fitted to our landscape. Uh, but we were also a lot less wooded, and it's nice to have woods. But there's a balance. And the, the sheep specifically will maintain well, woods well. They'll maintain lots that have solar panels. They're not as feisty as goats, so they won't chew the wires. They're not as big and bulky as cows, so they won't break the solar panels. So a lot of a good reason to have sheep. But I, I'm not opposed if somebody had pigs and I eat bacon. I'm not opposed if someone has cows and I eat beef and I try to get my beef locally. I do get most of my beef, lo I get all my beef locally in East Montpelier and, and organic and I appreciate that and that's people that are producing milk but they have so many extra boys that they have to do something with it. So I eat that meat. So you know I'm not saying you have to eat meat but You'd be hard pressed to survive here without some meat or grow all your own food, not go to the grocery store without a tropical climate. Um, and if you see that you produce your own stuff, you have a lot less trash, you have a lot less waste. You'll still have the human waste, but you'll have, if you compost it well, you have compost for your garden or you feed your chickens and ducks. So it's a whole system. So to answer your question, I think that I wouldn't be necessarily opposed. I, I'm basically opposed to any extra ordinances as well. But if we were adopting something but from the state, it's a wash because we got to follow state rules anyway. Mm -hmm. So well, I, I, you know, I, I don't think we go against state and federal rules. So I think they apply to us anyway. So it's kind of like a. But it's not true that we could enforce uh, things like animals running large without our own ordinance. To, to, I don't believe the state is going to come in here and do this for us. They will not. Well, no. So, I mean, the people should be responsible for their animals. You know that. Right. It's a lot common and sense. And if they're, if they're running loose because people, because the owner is not paying attention, I mean, like this guy up here, his bull was missing, so everybody was looking for his bull, and he got his bull back, you know, yeah. on Facebook and front porch forum and all that. And <laughs> that wasn't like knowingly or willingly. Yeah, that was just an escape. Yeah, yeah. 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 But but there are people who there have been people who let their horses run loose and damage other people's property and run in the road and create a traffic hazard. 
Yeah. And I mean, the, sometimes the, I've seen the horses have broken loose on the road here. Also, moose, though. Uh -huh. We've had people hit horses. We've had them hit moose from calls that I've been at, you know, mm -hmm. rescue calls. But it does happen, but certainly nobody wants their animal to get hit. Right. Um, I, you know, I don't, I can't speak for the moose, but I don't think they want to get Killed disavowed either. Yeah. Right, yeah. but, you know, and it's not good for the people in the car, but um, I think that, you know, I think most people, it's common sense, so we don't need to have extra rules for food production or courses that are going to mm -hmm. pull a plow or you're going to ride them. People, a few people have made mistakes here and there. I don't think we should have to pay a huge fight price for bad apples. And it's, it is, it's a slippery slope when you start telling people what they should and shouldn't do with their animals when they care and they're trying to work hard to do it anyway. That's a hard um, Yeah, right. and as far as the state statutes, the state will back up its statutes if they have to, but I don't think they usually need to. People usually do the right, right. thing. Um, but if it's a state or federal law, it can be backed up if it needs to be. So we don't need to make more laws. Yeah, well, if anything, we need to make less laws yeah. and get back to how we used to be you know, 100 years or 200 years ago. But that's my take on it. I don't own any cows or horses no, yet. Mm -hmm. Thank skip. you, I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank skip. you. Yep, skip, please. So, not a farmer. I'm a member of the public. And I know my wife has been bitten by dogs just walking up Old Quarry Road. She was bitten by dogs. Doing my job as the Enhanced 911 Coordinator, I've been harassed by dogs up on Old Quarry Road. Also, horses and a mule have gone through our backyard torn up our garden and done damage like that. So as a citizen, I feel as though we do need these ordinances. It's not because the animals are bad. You know, it's the people who own the animals that allow them to do this behavior. You know, dogs being, you know, harassing people just walking up a public road, class four road, and you can't walk up there. And also allowing their horses to roam free and getting into folks' folks yard and tearing up their gardens and also walking on Route 14. The reason, one of the reasons for this large animal, domestic animal ordinance is because there were two horses allowed to roam free and they were killed on Route 14 while it was on the select board. So we're not reinventing the wheel here. We're just protecting, I believe, citizens of Woodbury from animals that are aggressive, from their owners who don't care that their animals are aggressive, mm -hmm. And for people who own large domestic animals, like horses or whatever, for now not keeping them penned up or corralled. And so I feel these ordinances are required just so Woodbury has something to fall back on. Also, Marcio, yes. there have been a number of other people complaining about things like nuisance dogs and large animals running free. That's why we're here. Yes. I mean, they're not here tonight, but they've been... At previous meetings, they've been encouraging us to upgrade our ordinances. Well, I mean, some of the people I was expecting to see aren't here either that do have animals, but I, I can just say that I don't have a problem with things that, like I said, the state's doing anyway. But if we want to understand this, the horses that were on Route 14, at least the ones that I went to that got hit, were they escaped by mistake. The person didn't want their horses to get hit. And we wrangled, and they were thankful that we were able to save mm -hmm. their horse, horses. Uh, from all, you know, from all getting killed, um, uh, and also um, you, you have to be careful. You 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 are allowed on a state road. You cannot go on the interstate with your horses, but you can go on Route 14. You just got to have common sense. You'd rather not. You, if you could take a back way, that's better. Take County Road. You lead your horse. You have to have control of your animal, um, and uh, you know. But we also have to be sensitive to what people need and what the public is. I think even the case where the horses were walked over here, a lot of times up that way, Quarry Road, I know they were just breaking out, but I think also it was a problem with insufficient fencing. So the people that are really complaining, though, they're not stepping up to say, I'll help you fix your fence. I'll chip in to buy you the right fence. I'll do this, I'll do that. People just want to like ride somebody because it's not the right thing. But that being said, I don't want some dog chasing after me if I'm taking a walk on Quarry Road to cut over, to walk over to, you know, the snowmobile trail up by um, Cabot Road. I don't need dogs chasing after me or biting me, so I understand nobody w wants that. Um, 
that you know so there's a there's a, there's always a balance of you want to keep people safe but all if the rules are you if the rules are there for a reason let's respect them but also let's see why these things do happen and let's be have more common sense help the people that need help containing their animals and figure out what the solutions are um, to, 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 so that everyone can be happy. Well, that's not really the town's responsibility to help people keep their, their uh, horses. No, not the town per se, but I'm saying people will be upset about something, but they don't necessarily help. A lot of times people just like to complain about something oh, yeah, that's uh, without, without actually doing anything about it or, or uh, you know, that kind of thing. So, I mean, I, I can cite examples, but I don't think I need to. No, I think you did. Well. What's that? But no, I think you're all right. Thank you. So yeah, I just want to say that that you know, but if it's if we're adopting state statutes, there are already state statutes. There's no problem. It's just again, who's going to enforce it? What are we going to do? We still got to police ourselves and do the right thing, as far as I'm concerned. Nope, no yeah, problem. I need to find a, an animal control officer also because we don't have one now. But when we get one, we'll be well. Ready. I would be willing to do something like that to volunteer for that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I have in areas good. I can contain. I, can, I have areas I can house animals oh. if they need to be housed till we find yeah. their owner. Oh. And I love dogs. Yeah, we do. What about vicious ones? Yeah. Any <laughs> They're dog. They're not all happy. Any dog. Well, I used to. Um, I used to work for EMS in New York City, and we used to have. I used to go to. The, police department to start my shift and I'd get one of their radios and we put it on emergency services unit because we didn't want to only have all the, pardon the uh, expression, granny calls. We didn't only want to do vomiting sick strokes. We wanted some of the action. It's a weird way of thinking, but we wanted some action. So we wanted to, emergency services unit is like the bad boys of NYPD. So they would go to the um, stabbing, shootings, etc. But they also would go to vicious dogs and they had the dog equipment. And my partner and I loved dogs, and we would go, and we rescued 17 dogs that they were saying were vicious, but they weren't. They were just oh. tied to a park bench, scared and barking and snarling. Mm -hmm. And we'd put them in our ambulance, so we'd come back later. The cops would hold for us. We'd come back in our, in our personal car. Mm -hmm. A few times, we even put them in the ambulance, mm -hmm. in, in the front with us, because we're not allowed to put it in the back of the ambulance. And, and get, we would get the dogs home in like Pennsylvania, New Jersey, this and that. So a vicious dog, it depends who you talk to. If you're Caesar Milan, if you're Caesar Milan and the dog whisperer, it's probably not that bad vicious of a dog. But yeah, I'm, if, I'm, if I was going to take the responsibility of being a dog catcher, I would have to deal with vicious dogs. And if I had to talk to the owner and be like, your dog is too vicious, you need to keep that dog off of the road, then that's what would have to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and my dog's not vicious, and I've had to ch tie her up just because my neighbor's um, concerned, uh, you know, about his property line. And my dog doesn't, you know, read property signs or doesn't, mm -hmm. you know, understand where the line is. So I'm going to have to put some fencing when I can afford to put fencing. And my dog, because my dog understands fencing. Mm -hmm. But I, I found some solutions, and, you know, she, there's not that many predators during the day, mm -hmm. so it's a good balance. And then at night, she guards the sheep and the ducks and chickens, and she's loose because that's what she has, she's doing her job. Mm -hmm. But that's a different situation. But I mean, I'm answering you in the sense that, yeah, I don't really believe in that many vicious dogs. Usually the dog, the pit bulls and the Rottweilers and the shepherds are just scared. But it also depends how you approach them. And uh, there is such a thing as a vicious dog and they should be dealt with. They should not be able to bite somebody. So yeah, I mean, that's important. That's a serious thing. Mm -hmm. Safety has to come first. Safety is first. So this is the approach that I'd like to take. I'm gonna pass both of these ordinances as amended, based on the last draft, okay. passed uh, VLCT. So the agenda, I, would this be the date that the agenda item is uh, at the regular select board meeting, or would that be the last meeting? It's the last think, meeting. We did have it at the, yeah, we did yeah, talk about it. It would be not this, this draft document. It's not the draft. It would have to be the final document. It has to be the final document. So I'm going to pass that, and then we have to just put it back on the agenda. And let me resend these, please, just to make sure everyone. Yep, that'd be great. If you resend them to all three of us, get that. Sure. And then I'll go through VLCT. That gives me two weeks to get something okay. back. We'll put it back on the agenda with the final draft. Oh, uh, okay. Very okay. good. 
So Thank this would be the so, so today would be the first day the agenda item is, is on a regular that's select correct. meeting. Okay. That's correct. So I'm happy to help with any other thing. You know, I you appreciate it. Let me let me send them to me again just so I make sure I have the very last ones because I think I do, but can't hurt that we all have them. I'll go do a yes tomorrow. Oh, that'd be great. Thank you, Steve. Mm -hmm. And thank you for all the work. Mm -hmm. I'll go to a VLCT with that and then and just I'll, 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 I'll wait for this up for you. I thought it was kind of interesting. It's what the Callis board has decided has to be amended to their ordinance. But I'm sure it's not something we want to go over. There. <laughs> no, I, I wasn't that too. That? Yeah. I don't think that's the So right. what has to happen for the dog catcher, so to speak, animal control officer position? Would you like to, um, uh, let's see, can we send him some stuff to study on what's right. involved? I would say contact Kim Silk. Well, yeah, he probably knows Kim. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, is he retired? Yeah. He, he vacated the position. Yeah. Okay, so who? how do we reappoint? I'd be happy to talk to him and get all the information. Yeah. And I know his setup. He has a pretty good setup, but... He said he also did say that he would continue to be the kennel with the border. border. Okay, great. Oh, that's even better. So you could... I mean, I have areas to board, but... If you have to take a dog, you could... He could take it. He has a good again. setup, so I, that yeah. would be good to have backup, because yeah. if you only have room for a couple dogs and you get five, yeah. you're going to need someone that has more yeah. kennels. Yeah. Okay, so talk to him, and then what else? And then, if you're willing to do it, we can appoint you. Okay. I'm definitely willing to do it. I will okay. talk to him. You can appoint me whenever you want. I'll give you my information. That would be great. Okay. I'm willing to go make sure that no vicious dogs are biting anybody or chasing people down the road, and that no animals are loose where they're not supposed to be. That would be I wouldn't great. want to, I wouldn't want to step on a cow dung pile when I was going to visit my grandma's grave either. <laughs> We appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mm. <laughs> All right. So, um, Skip, are you good? Sure. Okay. All right. All right. So let's circle back um, to our representative from the Washington County Sheriff's. Woo How are you? Not too bad. Thank you for coming. So, thank you for making it up here. Thank you for having me. My name is Mark Poole and I am the Washington County Sheriff. Um, I don't think I've met any of you maybe in passing over the years, but I spent most of my time um, when I was at the Sheriff's Department in the other side of the county for the most part. So just a little bit of background for me since I haven't met any of you. I was born in Barrie, grew up in Barrie, left for a couple of years for school in the Army and then came back. And um, believe it or not, I am a piano technician by trade. So pistol pack and piano tuner is what my friends call me. <laughs> <laughs> Someday I will go back to that full time. Yeah. But uh, I'm up to my eyeballs in the Boy Scouts. My wife and our between the two of us, we have eight children. Oh my God. So I started my career in Montpelier PD in 2005, was there for a few years, came to work for the Sheriff's Office as Brett's partner, believe it or not, for 14 years, mm -hmm. left for the Capitol Police Department for a couple of years, and then came back recently as the elected sheriff. So that's kind of me in a quick nutshell. And we elected you to something else. Um, before yeah. that, for many, many years, I was the high bailiff until COVID okay, hit. Okay, I remember seeing your name on the... Correct. Right. And, and that was simply job security because the high bailiff is kind of the backup sheriff. Uh -huh. So it was strictly about job security, but it gets the name out there and things of that nature. Right. So thank you for having me. Um, I brought a few copies of some of our stats over the last year. So who are the actual select board members? Here, here. So, okay. Some have three, some have five, some have seven. So I brought a couple okay. copies. So this is some of our stats. This this top sheet mm -hmm. is the traffic stats from um, July of last year through May of this year. And then the second page was July of 2021 through June of 2022. Um, 2022 was extremely challenging for the department. Our full-time um, patrol deputy moved on to greener pastures. He is now in Nashville Metropolitan Police Department. Mm -hmm. So he... Is a lot busier now than he used to be um, but staffing here in law enforcement in Vermont is challenging is putting it mildly so until we found a replacement for him we were scrambling to cover shifts as best as we could um, I wasn't full-time at the department myself and tried to fill in as best as we could but it was uh, mm -hmm. an extreme challenge um, our staffing is coming back up uh, we had another full-timer start today we have our, another full-time patrol um, deputy Davis Hart he's been with us for a couple of years 
This fall he is going to the full-time police academy, finally. So we are working to, to build the department as best we can in these circumstances. So looking over the stats real quick, do you have any basic questions based on that? I hope you don't mind that I stand. Um, I have back problems and I just work a little bit better when I'm standing. Fine. So. Totally good. Especially with all the gear strapped in it. Yeah, that's, that's a whole other matter. So the department is upgrading equipment. Speaking of gear, um, they're on order. We're actually going to the load-bearing vests so we can get some of the weight off the hips. Two back surgeries later, uh, I'm done with that. So we're trying to upgrade our, our, our equipment. We've gone to body cams in the last few months. We've gone to tasers in the last few months. We're changing the, the carriers. We're going to pants that are a little bit more comfortable and uh, we're modernizing as best we can. Um, it's just, we're a much smaller force than we used to be when I started in the sheriff's full time in 2007. We had 41 deputies, 43 deputies. Really? When I took office, we had 19. Mm. So, so are those positions still open? Um, that many was a majority was part time. Mm -hmm. So, but we had a lot more stuff to cover. People don't expect us to cover the stuff we used to. Um, at this point, I have two full time openings that I could fill. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we are we are looking to do what we can. Mm -hmm. okay. So, on a on a side note. Um, those of you who have seen our contract, you should have seen it come out fairly recently. Mm -hmm. You might have noticed a very large change in the billing rate. Mm -hmm. um, has Brett explained any of that to you in his correspondence? Mm, we, it, it, just, came, it came in the mail today. Yeah, yeah we um, just it to. on the agenda next meeting. Okay. But yes, it did come through for the, the increase. So our previous billing rate was um, 3125 or 3175 off the top of my head. I can't quite remember, plus mileage. So at this point, we're going to $60 an hour plus mileage. And that is simply the cost of doing business. Uh, we were losing money on our patrol contracts. Every time someone would come out, the department would lose money. Mm -hmm. um, are any of you aware how sheriff's op offices in Vermont operate, how we're funded? So it's, it's really confusing. So sheriff's departments in Vermont are not, um, for the most part, are not taxpayer funded with a budget. Mm -hmm. We are small businesses. The only things that are paid for by the state are the sheriff's salary, mm -hmm. and depending on which county you're in, some transport deputies. Brett being one of them, I was one of them for many, many years, mm -hmm. um, and are paid. their primary job is to transport prisoners. Mm -hmm. Their salaries are covered by the state. Mm -hmm. Everything else we do, or excuse me, the building is covered by the county and its mm -hmm. utilities and two office members. Everything else we do, we do by contracts for towns, for the traffic oh. control jobs that you see us out doing, mm -hmm. all the security services mm -hmm. at the courthouses mm -hmm. and other places. Mm -hmm. That is how we pay for mm -hmm. our services. Mm -hmm. So it is a literally a small business. Very strange. Mm -hmm. So when we're going out doing these patrol contracts, losing money, we would make up for it other places doing the traffic control type stuff. Mm -hmm. we, we would make a lot more money on that and one thing would cover the other. At this point, we don't have the staff to be out there doing that stuff all the time. So everything we do has to, mm -hmm. has to cover, at least cover its costs. So mm -hmm. our employees are, um, we have a very familial atmosphere. If we're very flexible, we're very family friendly. That's one of the best parts about working for a sheriff's office and we want to encourage that. Um, so that has been what we've been using to attract people. Our pay, unfortunately, because of the system has been uh, not the greatest in the world, hence why it's hard for us to attract mm -hmm. people. Um, you can go get a job at Burlington Bagel Bakery at $25 an hour to start and make more than our deputies, mm -hmm. for the most part. It's a sad world we live in. Mm -hmm. Montpelier PD, recently they were extremely understaffed. They are starting day one, zero experience at $34 an hour right now. Mm -hmm. I didn't make that until I was in year 16 of my career. So things are mm -hmm. changing, so yeah. hence why our cost of doing business has gone up. I didn't have a choice. So trying to increase the wages, the cost of insurance, the cost of everything is going up. Um, we sat down with the numbers and it was not an easy decision to make, but we didn't have a choice. Well, we're still going with a $5,000 contract, yeah. right? Yeah. Is that what's in our budget? Oh, yes. That's what yes. we budgeted. So based on those Benny. numbers of what we're going to based on the $5,000 mm -hmm. contract. So our mileage we, we are doing at the federal rate, which is you know, 0 0.675 cents per mile. Mm -hmm. So I will actually give you a copy. I have a couple of these printed out so you don't have to take notes if you don't want to. So the approximate mileage on a, on a given patrol shift is around 62 miles all said and done. So that equates to around $42 a shift. Mm -hmm. So we usually do a, a, a patrol shift of four hours at $60 is $240 mm -hmm. an hour. So approximate $282 for a four hour shift. 
So you can do the math. Yes. When is a patrol ship constituted? Is that like driving around the roads just kind of looking for, for trouble? Looking for whatever the case might be. We pretty well concentrate on motor vehicle and quality of life type of thing. We look for doors being open, something that just looks mm -hmm. off. You know, when, when something comes in, there's a crash here on Route 14, we'll deal with that. Um, anything that happens to be going on while we're here, outside of a, a large criminal investigation, we will deal with as best we can. Mm -hmm. um, anything that requires a lengthy investigation, we pass off to VSP, because that would eat through your budget in about three seconds. Mm -hmm. So we, we try to balance the, the needs of, uh, we'll deal with emergent situations, but um, the investigations we have to pass off just because do you really want us to pay for those So is there a different uh, level of authority that you have compared to the state police, for example, and drug use, drug investigations? I know you just said you don't do lengthy investigations. So it's not a matter of authority, it's a matter of cost. Okay. Um, law enforcement officers in Vermont outside mm -hmm. of constables have statewide authority. Oh. So mm -hmm. we can do anything and go anywhere as long as it meets the level of your training. There's mm -hmm. three levels of certification mm -hmm. in Vermont. and. Um, about half of our staff are level three, the highest level, which allows you to do mm -hmm. everything. Okay. And most of our, our, our other, uh, the other half mm -hmm. is what's called level two. That can do almost everything except for death investigations and, uh, and some sex crimes. So nothing we really deal with frequently here in Woodbury. Um, it, it would be, that's the stuff that the state police would deal with because those are the lengthy investigations. Thank so you. one thing we are looking to, to move for, I am an EMT and my staff, um, shortly probably this winter are going to be mandated to go through what's called EMR training at base. Um, mm -hmm. It's not been something we do yet but the fast squads don't exist anymore. Ambulance services are down and uh, it's something else we can do. We're out here so that's something they're going to do. Anyone who wants to continue to EMT, I, the department will pay them to do that mm -hmm. if they so choose. Um, but we're trying to improve the services that other volunteer organizations aren't doing it so we're going to try our best to help with that kind of stuff. It's kind of important to all of us. Unfortunately, well, Woodbury still has a pretty good you're, staff of EMTs. And you're one of the few. We, yeah, yeah. we have a great first responder fire department. So, yeah. so we, are, we are working our, our way forward as best we can, trying to provide mm -hmm. a quality service. Um, hence why we're sending our patrol deputy to the full-time academy. That's a 16-week program. Mm -hmm. And then another one of our deputies, she's going to go in the spring. And we're working on things. Right. So, so uh, last year, uh, Giselle Eldred, um, started a correspondence with Brett and with the board about uh, traffic speeding on Route 14 at Woodbury Lake, which has been a perennial problem. It's been there forever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we've dealt with the, done what we could. I mean, the state has reduced the speed limit a couple of times, and we put up those expensive um, signs, you know, the which solar work? signs. The yeah, signs. They, do they, work. they definitely help. Down. They're helpful. <laughs> yeah. So I have one question though. The trucks. Sometimes your um, sheriffs cannot stop the trucks or they don't because I, one of them told me they didn't have the authority to go through and check everything, but they speed by. So the, the trucks we can deal with for, for speeding and things of that nature, it's the overweight type of thing. Right, I don't the, care about the, the overweight. That, the that speeding is, is what's really getting me and they speed all the time. So to be brutally honest, everyone speeds all the time. Yes, they do. So we, we do the best we can when we're here to, to get everyone we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it'd be nice if we could be here 24-7 for everyone. Mm. Yeah. It would be. Yeah, well, we had been told a couple times that they couldn't do the weight thing, so they didn't stop them, but I would really like to see them stop for the speeding. So when one of our deputies sees one, they will be. So it's just okay. a matter of are we here when it happens. So that's yeah. the question. A lot of times we see the overweight trucks, everyone knows it with their rutted road conditions the way they are, they go through and that unfortunately requires some specific federal training mm -hmm. which is well above uh, our pay grade to be affected mm -hmm. because it's called the nasty is the, the, mm -hmm. the term for it in law enforcement. It's a two week federal course. Mm -hmm. It's nasty. Mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. so after, after um, Giselle raised the question, we had the Regional Planning Commission put out there 
tubes, whatever they are on yes, the road. The, the, and, the speed sensors. Yeah, and you got the reports of that. We did. Brent did, yeah. So a lot of what we do, we try to do everything these days is data driven. Everyone likes to hear those words, data driven this, mm -hmm. data driven that. <laughs> and those tapes allow us to see what volumes of what vehicles mm -hmm. at what times at what speeds. Mm -hmm. So it gives us a whole lot of stuff to work with mm -hmm. to better focus our efforts of, okay, mm -hmm. where can we get the most bang for the buck? Our staffing issues cut into that a fair amount because uh, depending on where the, that time mm -hmm. is, we can't have people out here all the time. Mm -hmm. or can't have someone work, you know, an hour here, an hour there, an mm -hmm. hour here. Mm -hmm. It just, it's not effective, but it allows us to focus mm -hmm. our, our efforts much. So you are using that information we to... Are. That's what we do with a lot of towns to try to custom tailor when to be here mm -hmm. and there um, mm -hmm. as much as we can anyways. But that stuff is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Does it need to be updated? It was just last year. It was just last fall. Okay. So, so they will do it done. so many times within so many years. I don't, I don't know the rules on how it works, but uh, the towns, they all love it if you can get the, the system deployed here anyway. So. Do you have any questions? How about um, Quick question. Oops. Excuse me. How about the things that they put in roads sometimes and you're forced to slow down? The, the speed tables, the speed bumps, the speed humps, all those kind of things? Mm -hmm. uh, what is a particular question? What about them? Well, just because I've seen them mm -hmm. at different places and they definitely make you slow down. They do. Um, unfortunately, no. certain roads like Route 14, not an option. Why? Because, because your uh, state highway the limit threshold is already so high, you can't expect a huge MBI truck to stop down to a 30 miles an hour when hitting that is like a hitting a yeah. There's there's a lot of rules in place about where those can apply based on engineering studies. A lot of that stuff has to be done, and uh, the state. Ha I am not an engineer. That's what I went to school for, but. There are a lot of rules about those things, and they usually have to be in low density, low speed areas. They can't be used for like parking lots. Yeah, back. Yeah, like a you know, rural type roads. Rack, little street and hardware had some last year. The very city installed a couple recently. They're in 25 zones, so. Yeah. I hate to hit one of those on a motorcycle. That would oh, be bad. Yeah. Flying. So the the V trans. I mean, the state controls what you can and can't do on their highways, right? Where? They have all their rules, whatever they need. And it was a few years ago, they extended the speed limit to 40 mile an hour to the north end of the lake. At one time, it was just the south end of the lake. But now it's the whole, the whole lake. So those, those traffic calming signs that we installed a few years ago, mm -hmm. they'll give you real time data as well mm -hmm. if you choose to download the information from them. Depending on which version you, you purchased, night. Yes, we did. Which one you did? We did. purchased one that we could actually. Oh, that's cool. Excellent. Even yeah. better, we, did, we can capture cool. the data. So if you do that, by all means, shoot it over to Brett. Okay. And, uh, yeah. He will add that into the mix of what's going on, when and how, and we will do our mm -hmm. best. Yeah, the software is in that cabinet at the town office. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's a little... Uh, it's a thumb drive that goes with it. Thumb mm -hmm. drive that goes with yeah. it, and, and, and what am I trying to say? Wi-Fi wi component wi -Fi. that allows you to take the information from the sign. So uh, on a, another side note, when you see things going on here, our cruisers are going to start looking a little bit different here shortly. Everyone's used to the red and white. Um, the days of that are coming to an end. Yeah. If you see a white on white, that is me. If you see a green on white, that is Brett. And as time goes on, you will see more of those coming in. What do you so mean green on white? Green? The colors are going to be different. The actual oh. markings are going to be green. Different oh. de design, oh. different pattern. Mm -hmm. um, too many sheriff's offices with the red and white tradition, we look like fire marshals. Yeah. So we're changing things up a little bit. So mm -hmm. if you see that, that's us. So. <laughs> Go ahead. Hi, I have a can of worms to open. Sure. Um, so I'm curious your thoughts on this. Um, we have a pretty big drug problem going on right now in Woodbury. I know it's more widespread than that. It's everywhere. It yeah. is everywhere. So what I'm seeing is drug traffic. There's cars and trucks that are not, they're obviously very not legal. Pulled over in places on the back roads, um, people nodding off, people that are clearly like using drugs just pulled over. Thefts, um, uh, lots and lots of drug-related stuff. Um, and myself and people I've talked to don't really know what to do because, like, you call the state police, they don't have the manpower or the ability to seem to really do anything. 
Um, and I'm just wondering your thoughts on, like, is there anything we can do about it? All you can do is take down the information when you see it, mm -hmm. pass it on to law enforcement. If somebody happens to be in the area, happens to be available, someone might be nearby and can deal with it. Unless mm -hmm. we can physically see it, mm -hmm. it's a whole lot of maybes is the problem. The legal system is very specific for a very good reason. Mm -hmm. And uh, manpower, we're all sucking wind when it comes to manpower. We're just the number of officers is a shadow of what mm -hmm. it used to be. And uh, I wish I could say we would we could solve the problem, but we happen to we have to be nearby in order to do something. It's it's sad, but it's the way it is, unfortunately. So I have wondered about this because there's a specific place where a lot of this is taking place, mm -hmm. and I feel like it wouldn't really take much, given that most of the vehicles that are in and out are illegal anyway. I mean, you could pull one of them over on the basis of the fact that it's not a legal vehicle, and I think it would be pretty obvious as soon as you talked to the driver you know, what was happening. Mm -hmm. um, does it make sense to call the sheriff's department over, you know, when you see something like that? You um, can. The, you can call VSP dispatch. They will know if we're out here. You can call our dispatchers. They'll know if we're out here mm -hmm. and see. Mm -hmm. So that would be the easiest way is let somebody know. Somebody might be here. They might not. I can't answer that. It depends on when, when it's happening. Got it. So, but okay. by all means, call and let us know. We would love to be everywhere at once, <laughs> and I would love to have the staff to do that. So when are they scheduled for patrol again? Do you guys schedule? It is scheduled in advance. The, uh, the patrol captain, Brett Meyer, he takes a lot of the data, our availability, what the town is sending us for issues at certain dates, certain times, mm -hmm. all that information, and tries to uh, fold it into the mix as best as we can to, to cover all the bases. But it's so only four hours. It's, it's only a four-hour shift, and... Uh, $5,000 doesn't go very far in the great scheme mm -hmm. so. So something needs to change then. So. Something's going to be taken away from something because people are going to be killed. So VSP, for example, um, do you know how many troopers they have on a shift for the entire barracks in Berlin at this point? Mm -hmm. They usually have two troops on a shift. Wow. Wow. That's it. Wow. Has there been any different having them in Berlin as opposed to Middlesex? No, it doesn't no. make any difference. They still have the same number of officers. Yeah. So the, their applicants <laughs> are down, uh, last I heard it was something like 80%. They're mm -hmm. down a ton of officers, like 50 or 60, oh. Oh. all said and done. So mm -hmm. it's, it's terrible all across the board. But, yeah. yeah, They're a little closer now for response They're time. A little closer, unfortunately, but those of us who work in like Warren and Waitsfield and stuff, now it's like a half hour oh. instead of 20 minutes. But, you know, that's where I spend a lot of my time patrolling. Mm. And it's like, oh. So, you know, I, I don't mean to be dismissive of any of this kind of stuff. We, we honestly would love to be everywhere at every time and improve the quality of life here in Vermont. We just, we don't have enough people. There was never enough money. So, it, it's tough. It's really, really tough. I was just gonna say congratulations on your appointment. Sounds like you're doing a good job and trying to get what you need. Congratulations on the more comfortable pants. It's a big one. <laughs> it's the little and things. The staff really appreciate it. It's the little it, so. things, that's yeah. right. And uh, it's the put stuff in is the best. Thank you very much. Thank you for your service. You're thank you for making it out here uh -huh. to thank come you. and talk with us. So I'm Absolutely. trying to do some math here just quickly, sorry, but for um, $282 for a shift, that means approximately four shifts for $1,000. So 17 to 18 shifts. The math's already done for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, 17 to 18 shifts in the whole year. Whoa. Yep. Mm. Right. So that's a couple of months, maybe less. Mm. That's what it so it's a, it's a budgetary thing, that's too. Right. That's where yeah. our five grand gets us. Uh, uh. Yeah. I, I would have loved to... to Increase the the service and keep the billing rate at thirty one seventy five. Yeah. Um, not really a whole lot of choice if you want the sheriff's department to exist at all at this point. So. So yeah. So but I mean in, in uh, FY twenty two, you spent less than two thousand dollars of our contract. In FY twenty three, so far, you're almost four thousand dollars. So we should be able to get a couple more. You will have maybe a few three more, more during. May and June, and, and <laughs> before again, the that, end of our... That goes back to what I said um, with our staffing issues in 2022, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. we're recovering. Right. So. Yeah. I'm hoping to have another full-time staffer. We're in mm -hmm. negotiations right mm -hmm. now. We'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. but I'm working on it. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. So if we were to increase the, the uh, contract at some point, we still might not be able to... 
Um, our intent is to grow the apartment enough to be a little more flexible than we were. Yeah. So I can't guarantee it, but we're working really hard okay. to get it there. Okay. Quick question. Would you advise someone to dial 911 instead of directly dialing your dispatch? It depends on the nature of the call. If it's, a, it's an emergency situation where you think somebody's going to be hurt, yeah. by all means dial 911. Yeah. To, to Lizzie's example, though, if she comes by and drives by and sees someone slumped over, that would be an emergency car. call. You don't know if that's yeah. medical or right. who so. knows what. Well, our fire department, our rescue squad and fire department get a lot of medical calls every mm. mm -hmm. yes. A lot. A lot. Yeah. More specific than our can. Yeah. Yeah, that's why we all carry it these days, because we have to. Mm -hmm. And it's really easy to give, and you get it for free. You should always have it in your car. Just don't, you just let, it don't, it in your car. don't <laughs> let it freeze. Don't leave it in your car. Let it freeze. Don't let it freeze. You gotta squirt in somebody's nose, yeah. and you could save their life. So oh. but put they some don't want to save in. their life. <laughs> put some Narcan. Well, they, they don't like that you mess up their high. That's true, but they'll be glad <laughs> to be alive later. Yeah. But so I recommend carrying it in your car. Yeah, you can get it free at the drugstore. Or what? You get it free at like uh, community centers, oh, um, yeah. hospitals. Oh. Can I ask a, a quick question that maybe any of you know the information? Cell service in Woodbury is terrible. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, lot of, a lot of what we do is via cell phone with our computers and our data-driven type stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we use Verizon. We have boosters built into Doesn't cars. Nothing. And uh, it gets us a little signal. Has there ever been any talk of another tower being added or anything that you've heard? I'm just curious. You know, you know it's, it's the, I'm surprised that there's so much money and talk going into broadband when we still don't have good cell phone coverage. Yeah, I, I, I think know. like nobody really it. wants a tower. And, kind of issue, right? and if if you can get it, if um, the new company comes, they can put or it Peters. on, on yeah. telephone poles. So, so there might be silos and you know, all kinds of stuff these days. Yeah. yeah, there might be some improvements when the broadband goes through. That right, and if that's what you know, we were, that's what was advertised. Oh. Yes, and and you know, I think if we can get some on telephone poles, it'd be really nice. Cell service is our friend for a lot of stuff we do. It just makes our job a lot easier. Mm. So. Yeah, and you won't have it here. Although, well, we have a spot at the town office, which the druggies really know. They really and, care. And, so feel free to swing by. <laughs> and, and apparently, you can get it at the post office from the school. Because I asked, yeah. I saw yeah. them, and I know. She, I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, oh, I'm getting. She was at the post office here by the fire department, and she was getting signal from the school yes. across the hockey rink and right to her. So, you, really? so depending where you're located, town clerk's office or from uh, the school at here. The, at the town office. Or yeah. at, po oh. at the post office, you can get the Wi-Fi. At the fire department, we do not provide that. If you're on the Cabot Road, right? Or you are where? on Cabot Road, or on Cape Brook Road, if you're up high enough. You can get oh, a yeah. weak signal. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right. sure so you all West appreciate Bridge. a tower too, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any other questions? Mm -hmm. I don't see you get out often enough to these town meetings, but in any case, um, I didn't bring a business card with them. I left them in the cruiser. I'm sorry. But I will give you all my email okay. and my phone number if you would like. Great. Thank you. So when you're all ready, it's ready. Mark, M A R C, I spell it the correct way, <laughs> dot Poulin, P O U L I N. <laughs> at Vermont, spelled out like the state, got dot gov, G-O-V. State, S-T-A-T-E? Nope. Okay. At Vermont, spelled out like the state. Oh, okay. Not V-T. Okay. 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 So Mark Poulin. Mark dot Poulin at Vermont.gov. Vermont at Vermont.gov. Vermont.gov, okay. So, best way is shoot me an email and okay. we can go from there. Thank you. Thank you. Phone number. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you all very much for doing what you do as well. Volunteer <laughs> service is uh, you were challenging. Give us your phone yeah. so. Is there a phone number that you can give us? Oh. Um, I'll give you the department phone yeah, in 802-223-3001. Uh, is that the dispatcher? Um, that is our office number, 8 to 4, 35 days a week. Okay. And But you, are, you said you have a separate dispatcher? Um, that is our, our dispatcher during the day. Oh, okay. And at night, Barry City PD, um, you dial that number, it rings through to our answering service at the PD, their overnight dispatch. So. Oh, cool. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good. Thank you. Any questions ever, let me know. We'll do what we can to help. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Nice to meet you all. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you.
Yep, thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Yeah, Let's start. Let's start Parts. here. Yeah. So look for an email <laughs> tomorrow morning. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Skip. Appreciate Take all care. the work. Thank you. Uh, it's Mark. Cool. You know, I they know they uh, was planning to have something because the court pointed out something that they couldn't do, but this is not yeah. something please we want to get into. Yeah. Yeah. Please, please not get into. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, please, but I'm not sure. Please, I mean, please, that's yeah. the yeah. difference well, between Calus and Old Bay. Well, they're not in touch with Old Bay. Well, those other different, they're struggling, so with the large ordinance. Yeah. What, uh, that doesn't. Excuse me, can you just repeat the spelling on her last name on the phone? Sure. Uh, it's M A R C dot P O U L I N at Vermont dot gov. And the phone number? 802 223 3001. Okay, 001. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Right. I agree. 3001. Is what he got. That's what I heard. And that's what Lizzie has. And I think that we're all we're all in agreement. Um, Mr. Larry, okay. should you do the uh, road commissioner's report, please? Uh, He's just part of the night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm not going to be able to match his excitement. <laughs> we'll get you some vests and pants. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, we'll get you new yeah. pants. Yeah. We'll you new pants. Yeah. Good, good. Uh, yes, so, <laughs> first thing up is road crew applicants. Yeah. I've had one applicant whom I've interviewed. Uh, I believe I told you about him last meeting. Um, I thought we were dead in the water with him because he's looking for a full time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, since then, I've had conversations with Greg. Mm -hmm. Greg is definitely retiring in January. Okay. But he is willing to step down as part-time after July, mid-July. Okay. Uh, sort of to allow for this, the new guy to mm -hmm. come aboard. Okay. Um, so I've talked with the new guy um, briefly today, and he is rethinking his thoughts. He hasn't found anything full time yet, mm -hmm. and he's still available as of now. And you were impressed with his qualifications? I was. And as, his far as, as far as, far as, as my talking to him, his resume is ace. Yeah. It's right. everything we want. Right. Um, the only, the only sort of downfall is that he's 45 minutes away oh. so he lives in Hyde mm. Park mm. so that might or might not be problematic in the winter mm. um, but as long as we have an understanding you know uh, I think we can work through that mm -hmm. um, so that's where we are there still talking still negotiating still nothing mm -hmm. final mm -hmm. um, and no other applicants? No other applicants. No, mm -hmm. it's really has, has dried up. Mm -hmm. So Greg wants to get totally done? He wants to retire completely in January, yeah. first of the year. Mm -hmm. But he's when I told him about this guy and the situation with him mm -hmm. wanting full-time, yeah. Greg is willing to go he to part-time, yeah. uh, but not until July mm -hmm. 1. Yeah. I think for obvious reasons. Yeah, yeah so he might, he, I mean, maybe yeah. in the winter he'll want some part time work. Yeah, no, and that's what he said. He yeah. said he, would, he wouldn't mind plow, you know, plowing yeah. some if, yeah. if one's out or if you know, we get a big storm mm -hmm. or whatever. So mm -hmm. he's, he's not leaving us completely mm -hmm. high and dry. So that's good. good. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, update on Grader. Um, so, last meeting, the select board approved purchasing a grader. I was all set to purchase it. The sales lady said an hour before she came to me to sign purchase and sales, sold the grader. Her boss sold the grader. So, we hmm. lost that one. Uh, as far as buying it now, we can still order one. Uh, Brand new, but it's September. Is it the same pricing? 
stuff? They're going to guarantee the price, right? Uh, I believe so, yes. Same specifications yes. and... Right. Well, I would, I would, I would be able to, I would spec it myself. Oh, so I would so order the machine choices. as I wanted it, and oh. yes, I believe the price would be very yeah. close. Yeah. Um, but I'm still searching for one quicker than that because oh. that's a long time to wait. Do you it's, think the current one won't make it to September, or that it's like a? Um, I've. I've always struck when the iron's hot, it mm. seems like, <laughs> and I think that it's it's necessary on this one. Mm. Um, so there might be other dealers like New Hampshire? There, or there are. New York um, there's one that I'm investigating. In fact, I'm going to look at one to Wednesday. Uh -huh. It's supposed to be a rainy day, so I'm mm. going to take a road trip and go look at another mm -hmm. grader that is available. It would need to be switched up a little bit. Um, as far as the components that it has, but same brand or no different mm -hmm. brand, different brand. Made in. But what I'm hearing is that there's just none available. There's yeah. there's just none. Um, mm -hmm. The grader that I heard through the grapevine, nothing official, but the grader that was sold at state auction went for forty five thousand. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm a little mm -hmm. bit sore about that. I uh, didn't think it would go that cheap, mm. and I couldn't be there yeah. either. So, well, it's a, it is it's always it is. a gamble. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, and in, even if the price, the, the, I mean, it's a great price, but you it's know, still talking about twenty-one years old. It's twenty right. years old. Yeah. We right. want something that's warranted. Right. We don't want to have to do this over and over again. Mm. Right. So, could have been great, mm -hmm. but great for a really short period of time, potentially, yeah. mm. especially right. if parts start to get hard to find. Right. Mm. right. So, I mean. Yeah, great price, but yeah, I don't think you should feel bad about that. Right, right. It's not right for us. So, game's not over yet on yeah. that. We're okay. we're still in the running. We're gonna we're gonna find one eventually. Worst case, we wait until September. So they, but I they are gonna order that one. Well, no, not unless we not unless I we have to oh. commit to it. Oh, yeah, okay. But I want to explore all my options okay, first. Before you and I've yeah, got okay. right now. I've got one more to explore, and that is that's going to be Wednesday this okay. week. Okay, all right. So I'll have more answers, or maybe even have a greater by the next meeting. We'll see. Huh? So huh. that's where we are with that. Great. Um, Greg's status. I guess I've already mm -hmm. covered that. Mm -hmm. He seems to be healing quite well. Said that. Oh, well, that's that's what this is. It's a letter from his doctor saying that he can come back to work. Oh, really? Um, on light duty, he just can't lift more than 30 pounds mm -hmm. until after July 13th. So and does the doctor know that he drives in these big trucks? That I assume, maybe they're smoother I assume, than I know. So I'm assuming <laughs> the, the doctor that cut his back open would know yeah. what his occupation <laughs> was. Yeah. Yeah. I would hope anyway. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, that nice. conversation yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I'm sure that that, you know, that is, and the doctor told him that he's the judge. He needs to oh. judge his mm -hmm. amount of pain at the mm -hmm. end of the day or the next day or whatever. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So the thought is with that mm -hmm. is to bring Greg back in slowly. Like bring him, make, have him work two days a week, keep Dave mm -hmm. on for two days a week. Mm -hmm. That gives Dave a little bit of a break because I'm getting vibes from him. I don't want to be here, I don't want to be here. Yeah. Because he's got his own, he's already retired. He's got yeah. his own stuff going on. Yeah. So two days for Greg, two days for Dave. Yeah. It kind of eases Greg in and it relieves Dave a little Dave. bit. Mm. So that's my sort of my plan of attack there. So Dave's uh, been pretty much full time still? Pretty much every day. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, last week he asked me if he could only work three days. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and so this will give him, you know, work in two days, uh, which will be another yeah. little uh, relief for him. Mm. Um, so Greg will start the f not Tuesday tomorrow, but the following week. Yeah, we can tomorrow. We can tomorrow. Okay. okay. So, how's we get a plan? That's where we are with that. Uh, the fire truck, or the the fire department using t 
town trucks, I guess, so, went this last weekend. Yeah, yeah, I saw that Sunday. Everything seemed to be smooth as far as I've been told. And I was Tim, out of town, Tim was, so. Tim was driving there, right? Yeah, Tim, there was two, two Tim and I think Paul maybe was the other Paul was, I don't know. Oh, Paul was there. It's one of the Rudy, the Rudy or, who right, worked for the right. state. Was on his Caleb. 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 Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm hearing everything went smooth. There was no problems. There was no issues. Trucks came back full of fuel. Um, awesome. And I asked him to wash them both today. Mm -hmm. Just they needed it anyways. It wasn't yeah. caused by the work that they did. Yeah. No, it was just, just it was just needed. They yeah. needed to be pressure washed. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what I've got. I mean, the roads are in pretty darn good shape. I have yeah. to say. Um, we've been out with the grader mm -hmm. every chance we got. Mm -hmm. um, Didn't break yet. Hasn't broken yet. <laughs> right. You serious? Don't say right? that to us. I don't got some wood or something. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, but so we're we're about ready to start summer projects. Start getting going on ditching and changing culverts, uh, sand. We're gonna put up our winter sand. I'm going to change things a little bit there. Uh, Greg doesn't like it, but it's it's going to happen. It's just a matter of how it's how it's done and how it's put up. It's not a big change, but we don't have to go through another contract, right? No, 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 no. no. We're, okay. we're still in it. We're still in the contract, yeah. so <laughs> not that part. I just mean how it's you physically how it's put up. Yeah. Put up okay. And, That's good. And also how it's taken out in the winter. Uh -huh. I just I I'm not okay with how it was done last winter. Are we good on ditching stone? And well, yeah, you can get that pretty regularly. Okay. Um, at Bigfords, they Bigfords. have mm -hmm. they have a big pile is over there on uh, Friday, and mm -hmm. they have a pretty good sized pile. So, um, I would I, I'm thinking that, and I'll run it by you guys. The piece of property that's on Dog Pond that I believe is owned by the town. There used to be gravel piles there. The corner. The corner. Is that still permissible for us to store gravel there? Or ditching stone or just, you know. I don't see a reason why not. I, mean, I think it's our, yeah. it's the town it's waste. Yeah. Right? Yeah. right? Yeah. We've yeah. often stored material yeah. there before. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've seen it. I've seen material yeah. there. Yeah. So I don't see any reason why we can't. Okay. Yeah. Just because I know during the summer when everybody's got big projects going, the pits run out; they can't make it fast mm -hmm. enough. So if we had a pile, we could stockpile some. Yeah. We could have it, mm -hmm. you know, get it now while it's available, and mm -hmm. have it on hand for mm -hmm. us when we need it. Is um, I don't know. Is is stone any less expensive or slightly more expensive than Bickford's, just because the drive distance is so different? Uh, then mm -hmm. where the Bickford or Bickford? Right, but what are you comparing it to? Stone. Stone. Just over, just over on four, on um, fifteen. Gravel, oh, across from gravel, oh, gravel, oh, okay. gravel, gravel, gravel. gravel. Okay. Uh, so gravel only has um, bank run, bank okay. gravel. Yeah. They don't process it. I mean, they run it through a crusher, but they don't. So they wouldn't have like the ditch and stuff. They won't have ditch and stuff. If they did, it would be the round cobble, and you don't you want, want that, that for yeah. for ditching. It doesn't lock together. Yeah. So we have to go to Marshfield. We have to go to Marshfield. Mm -hmm. um, you can. We also get some from Fry's in Danville. In Danville. Yeah. What used to be Fry's, it's mm -hmm. Seacard now, I guess. Uh, or Kingdom Gravel is the actual. Yeah, that's kind of Bickford's, Bickford's, Bickford's is McDonald's mm -hmm. now, right? That's mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I just, you know, I just was thinking of that being able to store some material. Yeah. Um, we well, do let's have, take advantage of that space. Yeah. <coughs> so, and it's, it's right not there. far to go and bring a loader over there. Right. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times if you're in the middle of doing a culvert, you need mm -hmm. six or seven yards of stone. Mm -hmm. It's it's right there. You've got it on hand. You can just run back quick. Let's do it. Use it. Okay. Use that space. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, oh, the... Uh, that's all I've got. The RFP for the culvert out here, Brady, yep. you said you had a site visit? Yes. Yep. We had a site visit. Michael was there. We had two engineers. Oh. Um, that were the only two that showed up. Mm -hmm. And we have a date for them to get their proposal to mm -hmm. us. And we take it from there. 
So I we originally had four of them, four engineers mm -hmm. interested, but because we requested a site visit, they don't, you had to be there. There's only two in the running. Yeah, that makes it hard for some people because they have to take a half day off or something. It's yeah, crazy. but it's crazy not to do a site visit. Most yeah. of them, right? Most of them are self-employed. Yeah. And if they're going to win this bid, it's mm -hmm. a pretty good chunk of employment for them. So, mm -hmm. for me, the way I look at it, it's part of cost oh, of doing business. Yeah. You got to go look at a project yeah. if you want to do yeah. the work. If they're not on the ground, then they're not. They shouldn't be in the running. Yeah. So we yeah, should have we should have those back uh, by our by our date that we've set. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's all I've got. Yeah. I think I've been I've been working with uh, Michael with grants. Uh, mm -hmm. Took a ride with Ashley Andrews. Mm -hmm. Uh, to look at some other grants, it's um, it is the grant and aid mm. grants, okay. and showed her a couple of sites because she now it's they've changed it now they got to come and actually see the site before yeah. they honor the grant. Um, so I there was no problem. Mm -hmm. We didn't even get out of the car. We just drove by and said, mm -hmm. see the ditch, see the ditch, mm -hmm. see the ditch. And she said, yep, you can do this whole stretch. Mm -hmm. It has to be connected, hydrologically connected. Mm -hmm. So to what? To something? To, to itself. <laughs> well, to water. Yeah, it's okay. got to be close to a body of water. Okay. And as we all know, Woodbury is, it's not hard to find water. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. and that grant, uh, it goes by how much work you do. Mm -hmm. But it goes up to twenty-seven thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So if we if we can find that much work to do and document the costs and the machine time and the mm -hmm. labor, mm -hmm. then we can we can make a match. We can make well the match right. The match right. is included in our work, but right. we'll get twenty well, up to twenty-seven thousand yeah. dollars worth of grant money. And the match is what? Yeah, you're pretty 20. 20. Yeah. Yeah. Um so yeah, I think mm. things are going well. I I'm I'm not hearing complaints. I don't know if anybody else is, but the rolls look good, I'll tell you that. Yeah. 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 My my wife's a little Volkswagen bug, which is on its last leg, is doing your roads smooth. They're almost as good as the paved roads. <laughs> All right. well, Maybe some places better. better. Probably better than the <laughs> Maybe roads. some places right. better, yeah. Yeah, yeah. really. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, and you're going to be gone, what is it, the last two weeks in June? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, so the 15th is a Friday, that'll be my, Thursday will be my last okay. day. Okay, so I think our next two weeks. meeting after this is like the 12th, I think we have a three week window here. Yeah, yeah. I think June 12th so, is the next. No. Yeah. Right. Which one? 30, no, maybe not. Yeah, okay, those three weeks, so we'll see you again before you go. Before I go, yeah. <laughs> One more time before you go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> time to miss you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be, I'll be putting a list of things for the guys to do together while I'm, yeah. while I'm away. Yeah. Um, so that keeps the ball rolling. Yeah, I agree. You'll be back by then, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, any other questions? I'm good. Nope. Okay. I hope losing the grader didn't spoil your weekend away. <laughs> I, I'm going to say it didn't help it much, <laughs> but because uh, <laughs> I was really bummed out. I yeah. was, you know, I was really upset with that. Yeah. That's pretty last minute, though. Too. Yeah. Well, I. Yeah, but this did, it takes us a long time to make that kind of a commitment. Right. So. We and and on a more personal note, it's been. 27 years in this business, and I've never bought a new grader, so I'm really. <gasps> oh, yeah. Well, it's still gonna happen. You know, it's still gonna happen. It's still gonna happen. It's, still gonna happen. it's, still gonna happen. it's, it's gonna be even time. better. You get to check it out yourself. That's right. Um, exactly. Yeah. Great. Right. So. Okay. Maybe you can turn around and buy the old one back for your business. Oh, for my business. Yeah. I, yeah. Thought of that, but that's a lot of money right. for. Yeah. yeah. For a greater that would just sit. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Let that let that go. Yeah, I'm gonna, let that go. Let that go. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, I'm gonna go ahead and overtly agree on camera with Diana. Yeah. Let that go. All right. Uh, so, anything else on the agenda you need me? Uh, no. Yes, no. no.
Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice hey, I'm sorry. Have to go too. I would. I'd like to Thank stay you. and listen. I'll come again. I just gotta pick up my son. We okay. appreciate the time. Thank, Thank you. you all. Did you email me on that, guys? In the animal thing that he's gonna no, email you uh, about the. Yeah. Uh, actually, do you want my copy? You can have it because I'm gonna be getting. Yep, the new copy. Yes, um, it okay. has my notes. So here. Actually, I have those too. I, I have so copies. this is there's one for large livestock, and then one is just for like pets. Yeah, okay. yeah these are unmarked. Okay. But these I'll are take, not. Okay. These are not the most recent. Are these the most recent? Mm -hmm. No. See, I don't remember. I'll still look at them, but uh, I'll They're take all the same. Yeah. So pick one. But I'll take one for my neighbors too. Huh? And the ones that didn't show up. Oh. It happens. And then um, I will, um, can you email me the newest one? Yeah, what's your email address? Uh, the, the, the long one is marcialrodriguezarenal at gmail.com. How about can that? Can you spell that for me? <laughs> M-A-R-C-I-A-L-R-O-D-R-I-G-U-E-Z and then A R. E N A L at gmail.com. Three, four chances to practice rolling your R's. Um, <laughs> you want to just look and make sure I didn't miss a letter? No, and I've, I've always loved your handwriting. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Good to see you. Thank you all. Sorry nice for the interruption. You. Have a fantastic evening. Safe travels. Thanks. I'll, just, I'll see you at the next round. Sounds okay. good. Did you, you. did you mean, by the way, that we were that you were going to try to vote on it when he, next week, next month? Yeah. So it'll be three weeks. So what's the procedure if we want the to town to vote on it? That's, uh, what do I have to have write? To get a, you would have to get twenty. Uh, per, about forty people to sign on a petition to request a special meeting. A special meeting at the yeah. town meeting? Or a, spe yeah. a special meeting during... A special the, meeting. During the year. Yeah. Anytime. Oh, but, so it could we, be the yeah. town meeting. No, we wouldn't. Oh, no. We can't wait that long. Oh, okay. Okay. We can't wait that long. All so right. we have to... So 40 signatures, mm -hmm. special meeting. Mm -hmm. right. I'd be happy to sign on that, too, if that's helpful. Thank or maybe you. I'm not allowed. Have... I don't know. What's that? Maybe I'm not allowed. I'm not allowed. Of sure. course you are. Is that right? I can? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Email. So email me, I'll swing by, I'll call you. Okay. I'm better by 802, I'm better by a phone anyway. 802-456-7035. Landline, messages are good, I'll call you back. Anyone can call me. Okay. Um, I will talk to Kim Silk, and then how do you, do we do this dog appointment? Because we do need one, and that guy should not have to walk down the road and be attacked by dogs. He's mm -hmm. not the only one. That needs to be addressed, and that should be addressed. Like yeah. I said, mm -hmm. excuse me, safety first. Yeah. So, Which is why we have ordinances that we're Yeah, yeah, it's fine. I'm happy to talk to I I love people. I can talk to them about their dogs. Their, their dogs are just trying to protect their thing. Most people I get along with, they'll have to control their dogs. That's understandable. I don't think that's a problem. Mm. And not, I got Mark Poole in the back now. Where'd he go? So, <laughs> <laughs> At so, 282. It'll t cost you $282, but... When the... Uh if uh, we adopt this or decide to go ahead at the next meeting, and then it has to be posted in public places, and the notice of adoption has to be published in the newspaper with a notice of the right to petition, which means once the select board has done it, you know, decided to adopt it, we still have the right to, uh, to petition do the 40 any, any signatures. Any so would that be the time, or is it pre that to get the signature? It doesn't matter. Yeah, that would fine. be the time you could send it in. You could start, oh, could start any time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And okay. for the dog thing, let me just talk to Kim and then call it's you. The same, it's the same. We have same a bunch deal. of. We, there might be some. Same um, deal for the position? No, 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 no. There might for be the dog catcher. Yeah. yeah. For the dog catcher. Talk to Kim yeah. and then we can appoint you. So just like call me, I'll call you and tell you I spoke to Kim. Yeah. We have a lot of information on the duties of the animal control yeah. officer, too. Yeah, I'm pretty familiar with them. Yeah, okay. okay. So just reviewing that and then yeah. we're happy. Yeah, yeah I've rescued to, a lot if, of if dogs. If you want to do it, we're happy to appoint Okay, you. I'm happy to do it. You still have awesome. the one, the Morena? She, yeah, she's getting yeah. more mature. Oh. She's a year and change, still yeah. happy, yeah. Mm -hmm. She's great, yeah. Thank you all. Bye. Take Bye. care. Bye. Ciao. See you later. See ya. Just leave me your number. I'll call you about the um, Kim Silk and whatnot. You can pass it on to them. Will do. Thank you. Adios. Are we all looking at the same thing? I think so.
Okay, not that one. Okay. <laughs> Lizzie, do you have some things that... Oh, God, I went through the whole thing and made notes. <laughs> so, start where you want to start? Um, but I'm hitting a few. I'm going to skip a few that I think maybe I was being overly nitpicky, because that's in my nature. Mm -hmm. Um, on page five, lunch breaks are, so it's like the third paragraph down. Lunch breaks are considered hours worked and will be paid unless the break lasts at least half an hour and the employee is com completely uninterrupted from work. I think that means to say from lunch. Um, to what? This means to say what? Uh, so if you read that sentence, it doesn't really make sense. No, it doesn't. It should be paid unless the break lasts, I would say, more than half an hour. Well, I think the point of it is meant to be that they're taking this break and that it's an uninterrupted break, but the way it's worded says it would be uninterrupted from work, which is not the point of a lunch break. Um, well, but, but it may not be explained. considered well. hours work. I mean, they're being paid for it, so well, I guess they... I don't remember how that works in the business world. You get paid for your okay. lunch break? I guess you do. Lunch breaks are considered. Usually you do. Yeah. If it's half an hour or less, you get paid for your lunch break. Consider <laughs> hours work. Unless the break lasts at least a half an hour and the employee is completely uninterrupted from work. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, does it? I think what they meant to say is that the employee was completely uninterrupted from their break. During their break? Because if you're like, you know, taking a break but you're stopping every, going back to work, you know, intermittently during it, then it's not really a break. Mm. Okay, so well, I guess the question is, do we want people to be encouraged to have an uninterrupted half an hour break, or do we care if they just grab a sandwich and go back to work? I wouldn't personally care, as long yeah. as like their day is productive, however mm. they would want to do mm. it, you know? I don't understand that. At least a half an hour. Well, so we can reword it and make it more mm -hmm. simple. Lunch breaks mm -hmm. are considered hours worked and will be paid up to one half of an hour of uninterrupted time. Sure. Pretty straightforward. Mm hmm. Up to, up to one half hour of interrupted time. Is that, I just want to make sure I understand right, that's giving them a half hour paid lunch break. Correct. Which Possibly they didn't have prior, but um, depending I don't know. on how they, you interpret How do they do that, Brandy? That's do they? the only way to Since I've worked here, they, okay. they've never, they don't show lunch breaks. Mm -hmm. It's just part of the day. It's correct. It's built and I know. Yeah, it's always paid, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Mm. Well, right after that is the part that was grayed out, we recommend that every municipality adopt an on-call policy to specify what activities are allowable when an employee is on call and what hours of an on-call shift. Did we really... Barry? I don't know. On the page? Such a policy may that. specify oh, whether... Oh, okay. Crew will do... That is all crossed out, and then it says crew will develop an on-call policy, but that's all crossed out too, so mm -hmm. I don't know. So what we left it as is the road crew subject to the on-call policy, which will which shall be adopted annually by the road commission and approved by the select board. So but it's not to, so it's not going to be pr not, really part of this? It's not part of this document. Oh, okay. And that's why it was all removed, Okay. because the road commissioner and the crew have to design that 
and then mm -hmm. come to the select board, but it's not part of the employee document because yeah. it's specific to the road crew. Okay. I did have another one from this page two. So section E, outside employment, mm -hmm. the second paragraph. Um, prior to accepting any outside employment, employees will disclose their intent to do so in writing and obtain prior clearance from the select board that such employment does not constitute a conflict of interest. I think that's to, that's like getting into their personal lives. Like if they can't, I feel like their life conflict outside of, of work Conflict of interest is not part of their personal life. But, um, so if they go after a job that is in no way a conflict of interest and they know that, I don't think they should have to come and tell us. Like, mm -hmm. I think if there, if there is a conflict of interest, then how would we know? Um, I don't think we need to know. As long as they're using good judgment, we shouldn't have to get involved in that. So we just make that assumption. Yeah, and then if there is a problem, like it'll then be then right? retroactively we have to do something about it. Um, I mean, I don't know that it'd be retroactive, but well, if someone takes a job where there is a conflict of interest and we haven't done anything about it, then mm -hmm. retroactively we have to do something about it. Okay. Um. I don't know, it doesn't seem... being proactive about it. It seems like if they're off the clock with the town, that they should be able to do whatever they want, and it shouldn't be our place to tell them, you know, whether or not it's permissible. Even if there is a conflict? Um, I mean, hopefully they'll be able to use good judgment, and there won't be. Okay. I don't know. I just, I don't agree with, um, I feel like when you're on the clock, you're on the clock, but when you're not on the clock, I don't think that it's our place to be telling people what they can and can't do or make them ask permission. Mm. So you're just not remember. concerned about conflict of interest? I mean, I'd be concerned if one came up. I just think it's kind of overstepping <clears throat> to assume, you know, that it's our place to make people check in for things that they may be doing when they're not at work. I mean, it's one thing if they're like a half-time employee, but if they're already committed full-time plus overtime to the town. I don't think it's asking that much to, to have them tell us if they're going to be working, you know, a couple of days or a couple of nights a week at the card store or something like that. I don't, I don't, I don't think that's a burden because it would be very unlikely that the town would say, or the commission, road commissioner would say, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. I guess to me it just seems like, you know, whether or not it's a burden, it, it just seems overstepping to me. Well, if we strike it, we do have to make some statement about conflict of interest in some way. Okay. There's not a separate conflict of interest? Um, section that here? is the section mm -hmm. for outside employment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, well, just like that. things like nepotism, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, there have to be separate statements for those. Spent quite a bit of time trying to make sure that this worked. Mm -hmm. this, is, this has been, I'm sorry if I'm a little bit short on this, but mm -hmm. I've been dealing with this for three years. Well, yeah, you <laughs> yeah. should have some ownership of it. I, I understand. So, but a lot but of these no, but I mean, it's, 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 it's up to you guys because you're the ones who have not dealt with it. So I'm, I mean, yes. I'm looking, I'm looking at it without having dealt with it for three years or any time. No, period, which is good. So. That's why you should be the one mm -hmm. making these comments. It feels to me, mm -hmm. reading the first um, paragraph in that sentence, that that's covered, and that if someone does go out and get a job that has a conflict of interest, they've already violated the employment policy, yeah. and so I guess I that would be cause for. Her Terminations or review or whatever. Interfere with their job performance. So it's just employees are prohibited from undertaking outside employment that interferes with their job performance or constitutes a conflict of interest. It does seem like it's kind of if you repetitive. Feel like if you feel like it's redundant, let's get rid yeah. of that second statement. But the second statement does, does give them an opportunity to make sure that they're not going to be That's yeah, so why we put it in there so that someone could mm -hmm. be proactive and then we didn't have to yeah. chase it down. Um, mm -hmm. That was the purpose of that so that we didn't have to, like, someone went and found a job 
it actually ended up being inappropriate because of time conflicts or mm -hmm. a fun, <coughs> excuse me, a functional um, conflict of interest mm -hmm. associated with their town and plant. At least we had caught it before they mm -hmm. took the job, mm -hmm. as opposed to, hey, you took this job and you can't, you can't do it. Yeah. If you want to keep your town with the job. I you know. totally so get how it would be helpful. But I just you feel, feel like, like it's, it's too invasive. Invasive, yeah. Right, let's cut it. I don't think so. I don't think it's invasive. Mm -hmm. Let's 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 cut it. We'll rely on the first part of that section. <coughs> and if they screw up, that's their own problem. And then they get right, fired. Yeah. And then we fire them. That's not fair. No, it's totally fair. Well, I mean, we, they made, we could have warned them. And we could have warned them. But they made a bad warning process. There is no warning process because we won't even know. Right. Well, we'll know if they're not showing up at work, though. Right? <laughs> or if there's like and a then they get fired anyway. Or warned, <laughs> probably, right? I don't know. If you don't show up to work, you right. get fired. <laughs> mm. I made a lot of notes. I don't know if you no, keep going. Going. Yeah. Oh, and I'm also, I read this a long time ago, so I'm like, looking again. Where are you? I'm on uh, section 13, performance evaluations on page 8, yeah. but I'm reading it before I even open my mouth because I don't remember what it was. Oh, I just wondered if it should be more structured. Like, would we yeah. want to set it up like they get reviewed, you know, such and such amount of months rather than just like you we know. have them for specific positions mm -hmm. so each specific position this is really only for the for the road crew okay um is set up as part of their individual contract um so we've done it on a contract by contract basis gotcha okay so that's why it's more generalized in there okay and i'd like to keep it general just because i'd like to leave that up to the road commissioner okay Sure. To make those decisions as to how to review in an equitable manner. Mm -hmm. but, uh, if we do want to make it more structured, we should probably follow whatever um, Alfred Larrabee is doing. Mm -hmm. uh, we go from there. Because we don't review, there's no review, formal review process for anybody who works in the town office and never has been. Because we're all elected. So it really, it just it's really goes to the road. Correct. Know, it's, it's really all about the road crew, mm -hmm. which uh -huh. is why we leave it to out to whoever the road commissioner and road right. right. or appointed okay. positions. <coughs> so. Can we Where are you? go to section 18? Section 18. Notice here it says insurance and other benefits are also offered to the elected officials working 18 hours a week or over if they so choose and follow the elected official agreement. Details about those benefits as they exist on the date of hire or election are included as an attachment to this policy. I mean, that's a, a huge change if we start paying part-time elected officials for health insurance. I don't know what the what the uh, agreement is. I mean, I understand it would be good if they wanted to buy it through our policy. That's basically, one thing. It's basically what it is. Does it say that? Yeah. Insurance benefits. Yeah, it's that you can buy into the policy, but um, if the town wouldn't be paying the for it. The town can't pay for it. And we can be more specific about that. But no, there's some room for the speed. But no, there. I mean, and you have to be working 18 hours a week. They, they work 18 hours a week. You work. Eight, you work 18 hours a week. The, the elected officials do. You are. I mean, the town. Official. Well, I, don't, I mean, the t clerk and treasurer. Well, we're supposed to have a different they have, policy. They have a totally different policy. That hasn't, yeah. hasn't been created yet. Oh, I hadn't been created yet. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, there is one back here, Appendix 2, that says this should be reviewed with Brandy, Town of Woodbury, summary of her employee benefits. 
who could provide regularly scheduled full-time employees working at least 30, yeah, that was, I, I understood it was 30 hours a week. I think that's the state law. But. but it does walk that line, hypothetically. What? Pike has been working 30 to 40 hours for the last two months. Well, he's not, but he's not a full time. Correct. Employee. It wasn't a hire saying you if are. If he wanted, a -time yeah. Time. If he wanted to come and say, "I want to be in this position," right. We can quote. Make a commitment. And yeah. Work thirty hours a week. That would be different. But so the t so. I don't know why this is in here. The entire so section. Full time yeah. employees. I don't understand why this part about 18 hours a week or over is in here when other places it says 30 hours or over. We stole it from DLCT. In accordance with Vermont law, a part-time or temporary employee who, is, who works more than 20 weeks per year and averages 18 or more hours per week in the year is entitled to paid leave or benefits. So that's the paid leave time under yeah. Section 19. They mm -hmm. adopted yeah. the same thing for eligibility yeah. for benefits. That's where that comes from. Well, paid leave and insurance are two different things. Okay, well, make your suggestions to change it and I'll change it. Okay. What would you like to change it to? Well, I guess I'll think about that, sure. Well, I don't know if that's yeah. what I thought we already kind of did. You said th something about 30 hours. <clears throat> I guess you could just change 18 to 30 and that would comply with state law and not give people an idea that if they work 18 or 20 hours a week, they can get health insurance. I mean, it would be good if there was a, a way that they could buy into the the LCT policies and they can. have to pay the whole premium. They can. They can? They can. Really? Mm -hmm. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Nice. Uh, same section with the first paragraph. This is like super nitpicky, but it says time request form that is needed from Brandy. Like we should probably not use your name, but title, right? For A little bit. It'll be done before this gets finalized. But yeah, it's it the, the treasurer. Okay. And notice that there's no appendix number there because we haven't actually put the form in here. Mm -hmm. See appendix number. Mm -hmm. Okay, the request form. So, Brandy, would you send? Does that form exist? Yes. Do they always use it? No. Can I have it so I can stick it in here? Yeah. That'd be good. So, paid, were you just talking about the paid leave time request form? Is that what you were just mm -hmm. talking about? Mm -hmm. yeah. And Brandy said? She'll send it to me. She what? She will send it to me. Oh, okay. So I can make it one of our appendices. Right. This is titled for paid leave benefit. Probably some business full time employees on employees working less than. I had written this in the same paragraph, all other part-time employees working, I scribbled over this and I can't see what it used to say. Uh, working more less than. than, more than? Does it say? All other part-time employees working more than 20 weeks per year and less than 18 hours per week. So you want me to change that to 30? I think it should be less than 20 weeks per year and less than because this section above is for people who work more than 20 weeks mm -hmm. and 18 more hours per week. Okay. And we're not using 18 anymore, we're using 30. 30. Well, no, I think for some benefits 18 is 
Oh, Good. really? We're Leave gonna... time and stuff like that, you know. Well, that's where that's where BLCT was. That's... They're a separate appendix for just the town clerk and the town treasurer. Oh, benefits. okay. So this is only so this for... This is only for full-time. Oh, okay. So right. it doesn't even have to... Yeah, okay. All right. What, <laughs> what number would you like there? Because no, there mind. was a reason that I used 18 for all of these different things. All other part-time employees working shall not be eligible. So I think that would be less than 20. Okay. And less than 18. And you shall want to not be eligible for paid leave or any other benefits. So here you want to use 18. You don't want to use 30 anymore. Right. So why are it's we using... It's different. It's different. It's totally 18 different. 18 used to be the, our threshold. It was our threshold, and that's why um, we kept it. That's why changing was, some of these to 30 doesn't make any sense to me. So, well, and that's where Michael had been pushing because the LCT said the agreement of the town clerk and the town treasurer it gives the select board a little um, authorization no over us, kind mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. yep. um, but one has never been created. Mm -hmm. um, For good reason. So that's, if you're changing, so the idea was to make that, this policy, just for the road crew, and then to have a separate appendix mm -hmm. just for the town clerk and the town treasurer, mm -hmm. because we do get fringes. A different set of benefits. At a different threshold, correct. Mm -hmm. Lizzie, do you have something else? Uh, I do, but I'm going to skip a few. Okay. Um, Was, uh, Alfie had a comment about uh, on page 11, the second paragraph is grayed out. Full employee time employees will receive holiday pay as part of their regular rate of pay and may count the holiday hours paid towards hourly hours actually worked when determining overtime compensation. This was taken out, and he said this is not fair. They should be able to use their vacation or holiday pay mm -hmm. and still get their overtime. Okay, so let's return that section. But then it says deletion based on section 29 overtime and comp time last sentence first paragraph. I haven't had a chance to go back and. Well, we removed it because back. it didn't match state statute. But uh, that doesn't. If we want to keep it, that's what we should do. And we did talk to him, right? Then that conversation come up. Well, Valfi suggested that the first time we, you know, mm -hmm. well, several times we brought this up and never got very far. But that was the one thing that he pointed out. Put it back. Um, I did have another thing. If I'm not jumping ahead, I don't know. Um, page 12. On um, page 12, under sick leave. Um, I just wondered, so at um, my old place of employment, the health center, they changed the sick leave policy while I was there um, and made a cash out option for people so that if you, it basically was intended to encourage employees not to use your sick time if you don't need to. Um, well, people shouldn't use their sick time if they don't need to, period. Well, I know, but this, so they created this policy, which was a change from what it had been pre prior to that. Um, and basically, uh, at the end of, I think it was like the calendar year or whatever, if you had a whole bunch of sick time, you could convert a portion of it into vacation time. And it was basically kind of meant to reward people who weren't using a lot of sick time. Um, and to create an incentive for people not to just be like, oh, I don't feel like coming into work. I'm going to, you know, call in and have a sick day. Um, so I just was curious if that was something that we'd want to think about. I can look it up. 
and I'll see if I can find some room. Yeah, I don't room think, yeah. I, I just object to the idea of people getting paid for not using their sick time because sick time is for if you're sick and if you're not sick, you don't need... Well, there's like yeah, a you're lucky. Sick. I mean, I feel like there's people who will come in even when they're not feeling well because they have that kind of work ethic. And then there's people who are like, oh, I have a, a sniffle, you know, and I have to stay home. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, obviously people can only make that choice for themselves. Mm -hmm. But um, I know to me that's kind of like it would incentivize people to do what they can to come in, you know, even if they're maybe not feeling like 100%. And so if they're, yeah, but when they should be sick. Well, I mean, there's different levels of sick, yeah. I guess. Like having a headache, like, meh, you know. Um, I don't feel super strongly. I just wanted to throw the idea out there to you guys. I can look up some language for it and add it to the next draft because we're obviously not going to sign this one. So at the end of that paragraph, it says, all accrued or unused sick time will not be paid out at the time of separation. That's different than what Lizzie is suggesting. Well, it's, yeah, right, it's exactly the opposite. <laughs> so, um, I don't think we have to, I don't think we need to assume that people are going to cheat. If they're sick, they should stay home and have sick leave. Okay. I'll look up some language and pacify you guys for the next draft. And I'm not, I'm not saying that on the assumption that I think people would cheat. It's just kind of. Um, it's a reward basis. It's a reward, yeah, pretty much. And also, and I'm not saying this to push. I'm just explaining my thought process. Um, like people who have families, kids, dependents are gonna use way more sick time than someone who doesn't. Mm -hmm. So it might feel a little bit unfair to someone who's like single with no dependents and healthy never uses a sick day and then there's another employee who has like three kids and uses almost all of their sick time because you know you have to stay home when your kids are sick um this kind of evens it out a, a little bit at least this next line that says an employee may not take sick leave during the employee's probationary period Correct. Did we have that before, or is that something it's new? It's never been held up. Okay. So that would be new, huh? It's normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just I don't normal. know. It's Very much normal. So this bereavement leave is something new, and I guess it takes the place of personal leave. We used to have three days of personal leave that people could use for funerals or basically anything. Well, this is just more specific. Very specific. Hmm. But that does take away the... the uh, Personal leave, right? That's there's short-term family leave, which no, is the following. Yeah. There's the leave of absence. There's military leave, jury leave, overtime, right? I mean, so we just sort of broke it up into things that were much more specific, like reasons to be on leave. Hmm. Trying to be as transparent as possible. beyond but on page 15 section 28 um in the first paragraph i circled holidays uh, the second sentence i circled it because we had already talked about changing that
Good. Did we oh, finish that? Oh, it's mm -hmm. not the power out. Um, I was like, oh, I guess the generator's not working. Oh, is it that? Oh, <laughs> that's that. We're just too oh, slow. Okay. We're not <laughs> uh, you're thinking that moving. So, anyways, was that last comment? Are we ready to move on? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was your last comment? Um, this is section a, 28. Yeah, it's I'm a sorry? Um, my last comment was on section 28, just the first paragraph there, the second sentence, all of that, we had already talked about changing that. So holiday, sick time, and vacation days do not count as right. hours of okay. words. Yeah, and so that refers back to a section that we already discussed. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll have the, to be reflective of that. the top of page 16, it says an employee receiving payment for accrued comp time shall be paid at the regular rate of pay earned by the employee at the time the employee receives such payment. So does that mean if they take comp time instead of overtime <coughs> that they don't get <coughs> an hour and a half for each hour? They get regular pay. Okay. Sorry, okay. where was I? Um, the top of page 16. Top of page 16, okay. An employee receiving payment for accrued comp time. Gets paid at the Should regular paid rate. paid at the regular rate of pay, okay. Right. So they don't make get sure that overtime was... pay, they get a regular salary, mm -hmm. hourly wage. Upon termination, an employee will be paid for unused comp time at a rate not less than the average regular rate of pay received by the employee during the last three years. Well, that's going to be complicated, but we'll figure that out. <laughs> For the employee's final regular rate of pay, whichever is higher. Okay. Mm. And down at the bottom of that page, the last paragraph. Mm -hmm. Those names are going to come out, right? Mm -hmm. Would it make sense to just not not use names? We're not going to put. All? We're not going to use any names. Okay. It's just going to be any employee who wishes to report harassment should file a complaint with the road mm -hmm. commissioner or the select board chair. Yeah. And we'll leave it at that. Okay, can we get done with this before we have a whole group? Don't even. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then same on page 18, there's the next, the last paragraph. Basically, it's the same paragraph from what I can see. It's the same paragraph. But same, yeah. Mm. Mm. That was, I think, in the band, and that's all of my notes. One of my first comments here was uh, the uh, it doesn't seem to be a paragraph about getting not really callback but getting called in. What do you mean? Well, and somebody we always had a policy that if they get called in on the weekend or a night or a weekend or something for something special like a tree in the road or something. They get paid three hours. Minimum. No matter what. And I don't see that in here anywhere. And I did see something. Maybe it wasn't that. Oh no, that's about holidays. Just kidding. Which that one can go either way. I mean, they could be called in on a Saturday, so then you've got the three hours, they were in there an hour, and now they get paid time and a half. I know, I know. I, I always thought it was maybe subject to misuse, subject to abuse. 
But on the other hand, if they have to drive in from town and you know it takes a half an hour by the time they get in the truck and grease the chainsaw, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, but uh, they're electric. <laughs> the chances are electric. Yeah. Really? Like battery operated? Oh, huh? they didn't want gas smells in the trucks. Yeah. Are the battery operated ones like really good? <laughs> this was a few years ago. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh. They work reasonably well for small stuff. Yeah, I'm just imagining like a big tree. Yeah. And yeah. A lot of batteries. But anyways, this uh, <laughs> That's good. it should be. Maybe it should just say they get time and a half for whatever hours, extra hours they get called in, plus travel time or something. So we'd have to draft a whole paragraph because right now there's nothing, right, for that? No, mm -hmm. right now, well, in ours at the town office, it's, it's um, you come in for a half an hour, you get paid for three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe three's a little excessive. Like, I do get, nobody wants to but, just get but called most out. most of those times it's weekend hour. and then it's time and a half. And yeah. You're yeah. looking at Over overtime road crew members only. Town provides overtime compensation to non-exempt employees for hours worth more than 40 hours in one week. When a full-time road crew, full-time only, full-time road crew member is called into work on any Saturday or Sunday, that employee will be paid for a minimum of three hours at a rate of one and one half times the employee's regular rate of pay regardless of whether that employee has worked 40 hours that week. Mm. A part-time employee called into work on a Saturday or Sunday should be paid for a minimum of three hours at their base hourly rate. Mm. That's the language that we had before, yeah. the language that Brandy is referring to, right. I believe. Yeah, that that's, it. that's what I have to hold up with. Is well, that's what, what we have. have now, so. Three that's hours does seem maybe a bit excessive. I mean, unless you were driving well, an hour to get here. Money but. numbers? It's you can call me out anytime. <laughs> you have a gas chainsaw, right? I do. So you can do a bigger tree. Stop. <laughs> Are we calling you now? <laughs> yeah. So, so I, can, I can integrate this back in. This well, is the, this is the 21 policy that we've been working on. Worked, uh, it's worth discussing. It's, it's worth discussing? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's what we're doing, right? I don't know. Whether you want. <laughs> Are we? Isn't that what we're here for? Do we want to not have the minimum be three hours? Do we want to say like a minimum of, I don't know, one and a half Two hours? hours mm -hmm. Two Like I guess it depends, you know, because it does suck to get pulled away from whatever, your kid's basketball game or, you know, there should be some compensation, but that does oh, seem yeah. maybe a little high. Want to make it two? That make people feel better. I think people that's are, more if, fair because yeah. If people, cause I mean, like if the example that we just used of the person that Mr. Larrabee is considering hiring was in Hyde Park, mm -hmm. their entire time is going to be driving here. Yeah. Mm. They're probably not the one that's going to be called to come in. If it's your only other, it's a, if it's your it's only other full time employee, yeah. right. you might very well be. Are you, yeah, so are you thinking gonna, that we should keep it at three? I mean, I guess I can see it both ways. Yeah, like, I think that there's a, I think that there's a reason that we had it at three. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want to shrink it to two, I'm not against keeping it at three. Um, I think it's hard to actually get in there and get anything done in two hours if you're called in for, mm -hmm. you know called in for something like that because things won't be prepped you're going to be doing a lot of stuff on your own mm -hmm. um, I think that two hours is not a lot of time well let's leave it in then the way you put it, put it, it back in. in I don't know where it came out from but I know where it came out mm -hmm. so did the board talk about mm -hmm. not doing it mm -hmm. oh so what what was the reasoning for leaving it out because it just became overtime. Oh, okay. 
Just so it's just the one with yeah, just yeah. regular overtime. There, there didn't have to be. <coughs> There's separate. no minimum. There's no minimum. Oh, so, okay. So it was well, just really, half an hour. It's just like you really, get paid for half an hour. You get paid for half an hour of overtime. Yeah. It was just really easy. Like, and you're, you're saying just, it's unlikely that someone would actually be called in for only a half, only a half hour's worth of work. Like it would usually be enough work to be substantial. Well, that's why we took this out. Yeah. Because okay. it, it mm. just seems silly. No. Oh, okay. Because well, I overtime is overtime. Yeah. You know, you get yeah, called in get at overtime. Yeah. You, you get, get your time and a half. You get your overtime. Mm -hmm. so and it's specific thing. to the amount of time that you work. And then mm -hmm. all this stuff just yeah. is superfluous. Okay. Well, I didn't realize that that one had been discussed. So that's why I noticed that there was a difference. And I think to keep moving it out is a good thing. Why we took it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. It just didn't seem to be necessary. Okay. Seem to be making things overly complicated. Yeah. Okay. So we'll keep it out then? Leave it out? Yeah, leave it out. Maybe we leave it out if the board already discussed it. And that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. It's hard not knowing all everything you went through over these oh, no. last years. Uh, well, you, you, <laughs> you know it because that's the draft. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. But if unless I went, you know, <laughs> for it. Yeah. it makes my eyes cross. So, short term family leave. That's something totally new, right? Mm -hmm. And was there a budget of any discussion of what that might cost? Or? Is that an insurance program or mm -hmm. yes, so it is? So the town has to pay um, insurance for that, right? Mm -hmm. Short term family leave applies to all employees regardless of whether the municipality is covered by the Vermont Parental and Family Leave Act. Which everybody is. Oh, okay. An employee is eligible for this type of leave if he employees been employed by the municipality for at least one year for an average of 30 hours per week. So that's the not during probationary period part. To take unpaid leave not to exceed four hours in any 30-day period and not to exceed 24 hours in any 12-month period. So this only allows them to take unpaid leave. Mm -hmm. Does this only allow people to take unpaid leave? Yep. No. No, the whole Vermont Parental and Family Leave Act is paid leave. Okay. The so next section here, right, is about allowing to people to take unpaid leave for specific periods of time, which is in addition to that. Huh. VPF LA. Okay, I guess that's why it was confusing to me. Do you want me to make it as a separate section? Well, I just. Can you explain the difference? Short term yeah. family leave? Which is paid. Which is paid. And. Unpaid leave, which is obviously not paid. No. For a specific time range. To participate in preschool, to attend. Right, company, so like you, you decide to take time off of work because you want to, you know, go on a field trip with your kids. Mm -hmm. Right. That's unpaid? That's unpaid. Okay. So, is there restrictions on when you can get the paid? Oops, I'm going to it. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. So these are the these are the areas where you can take unpaid leave. Correct. So are there restrictions on when you can get the paid family leave? There are. There is a list um, which we didn't include because you can refer to okay. the v VPFLA mm -hmm. for that. Because that's where it's covered. That should be employee included. I mean, we could include it in here, but it would be mm -hmm. long and hard. And did the, did the select board decide 
or figure what the cost would be for offering this short-term family leave, or is it a requirement? It's a requirement. But we don't have it now? It doesn't exist in our current policy now. But if it's a state requirement... They pay for it. Huh? They pay for the it. The state pays for it? Yes. That's what the Vermont Parental Family Leave Act is all about. Oh, okay. So there was an analysis of the cost, and it's nothing. It, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they have to claim it, but it it doesn't cost the town. Oh, okay. That's what I was wondering. I'm sorry if I wasn't clear. Leave of absence without pay. So is there a threshold to that unpaid? The unpaid? Correct. So you have a full-time person. Um, Can't exceed 24 hours in a 12-month period. Okay. As it's written. Yeah. That's uh, 21 VSA 472A. So there's no, nothing in here that says they can take unpaid leave for any other reason. I mean, people should be able to. I don't know. Seems like if you have to be gone and you don't have vacation leave or sick leave, then you can go off payroll. That would only be. In a I think that would be a different. That, that would be a different kind of. Yeah. That would that would be somewhat different. You know. Mm -hmm. it's, if you if you have to leave your job, that's and try to have your job secured for you when you come back. That's mm -hmm. a different conversation. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, okay. That's you stepping down from your right. position. Yeah. Which is not what this is designed for. Okay. This is this is emergency related. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I hate to be coarse about this, but I only have another ten minutes to be here. No, we're Check. fine. So, I think we've got to the end, didn't we? Okay. I'm at the end of my notes. Okay. And there's the, the uh, general section about uh, the uh, Where are you, Ms. employees. The elected employees, elected officials are going to have a separate section. Yeah, it, yes. Yeah. It has not been created. Okay. Well, I don't know who has the the e electronic copy of this. Michael. Michael. Michael yeah, has I, this. I yeah. Well, he sent oh. it to us in the email. Yeah. yeah. We all have it. Yeah. I have one that I've been marking up, so I can, oh, great. I can work on that based yeah. on the comments that you guys have given me. Okay. And if there are other things, I will. Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm going to do it before. Okay, well, if you only got 10 minutes, let's move on to, if you don't mind. I'm happy to. I wanted to, I felt bad that I wasn't uh, a better lobbyist last, at the last meeting for some money for our town buildings. And um, so we've got $15,000 in the town uh, budget for the... Uh, special section, a special account for town building maintenance. And we've got seven something of ARPA money ARPA left. left. Yeah. And I'd like to, because I think our town hall is an important building, even if we're not going to be able to do the things that would allow us to use it more often, I think we still need to do the maintenance. I think we need to do the roof and the foundation in the back and I wondered if we could um, and Lizzie has already offered to um, to supervise that whole project even though it's going to be a smaller project I wonder if we could uh, give her the go ahead to start working on those two things sounds great so are we are we designating money beyond the 15,000 towards that is that um, the discussion is whether we should use some of that leftover seven grand. Yeah. Yeah. Do we want to table that discussion until I can kind of look at it and just see what I think makes sense price wise? Like, sure. If we're doing like a you know metal screw down roof, which I think is what's on there right now, that's 
the metal itself isn't crazy expensive. I'll write this mm. at the moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is what I got last year. It's just, it's just an estimate. It's not a bid. Okay. Sure. But that was the company that did the roof over here at the uh, library when we couldn't get anybody else to do it. Who was it? So that's just for the store. Okay. This is oh, this is for the temple. Okay. So he did a, um, he had a, I sent him a picture of where the building was and they have some kind of thing where they can zoom in and look at the exact dimensions and all yeah. that stuff. So. so I'd also like to have the chairman of the board sign this extension for the listers to have an extra 50 days to do their work because it's impossible otherwise. Second, yeah. Thank you. Um, Cranberry Meadow, we got a check today for ten thousand dollars, and the closing is set to go ahead on Wednesday. Exciting. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, that would be really nice to get done with that. Well, it's not really done, but this is some reading material for both of you on the Nichols Pond. That's, well, oh, okay, yeah. that's right. This is what the lawyer sent? <laughs> huh? This is what the lawyer sent? Uh, it's something from the lawyer and something from the other side, from the owner, from the, what do you call them, petition, I don't know what to call them, but petition. the people who think they can petition. cut the road off. Yeah, so just re read that and we'll be talking about it at some future meeting. So, like, not read it. You don't mean read it right now. But oh, God, just, no. Like, it just, soon. yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, oh, God, no. It just came in today. Both of them either. just showed up today. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not that we're not fast. Either, but yeah. Yeah. No. Can I, um, can I bump backwards to, to this, the town yeah. hall? Would we want to consider talking to the general community about making it like a community effort rather than hiring a contractor, or is that just way too complicated? Uh, Insurance-wise, and the question is what Boom. Uh, the threshold of uh, VLCT when we get penalized. We get penalized. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Unless right you're an employee, work. you're not covered, and if you have to have your own workers' comp, you have to have your own. Yeah. Ability. Okay. Gotcha. Sorry. Yeah. Unfortunately, the community effort thing. Yeah, so they're big yeah. Mm. yeah. So is that, because um, I know the building that was proposed at the school was going to be, I think they had planned on all the labor being community volunteer. Yeah, I don't know through the school. Oh, so maybe it's different. Their insurance, their insurance. Yeah. should be very strict. It, yeah. Uh -huh. aspect. It, mm, um, it's going to be interesting to see it, because we have planned on having a lot of community effort to do that. Um, and if somebody gets hurt that's not covered and wants to volunteer, then it's a, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's tricky. There are waivers that you have to sign for a lot of yep. these things. And non employee so, not employee workers yet. agreement so, mm -hmm. that so you there, get hurt. There are, there are ways that we can do it by a waiver, but we can't mm -hmm. just have people show up. Yeah, yep. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Complicated. <laughs> yeah, let's just make And we don't have possible. any any estimates on the foundation work. Okay. That just if I remember right, minute. was it just is it just one pier that needs well, to be replaced? Well, there's one pier that's obviously sinking. Yeah. 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 Okay. And, and rotating. I so will rotating. go. I haven't been yet to go look. I kind of got soccer season started, and you, you know how that goes, Chris. I do. <laughs> yeah. about it, especially kind of the, we have two practices at the exact same time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but I'll get over there and yeah. look and. If you let me know, I can try to sneak over there with you. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Maybe we could do it after soccer practice. <laughs> uh, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Let's, let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. Other business? Other business. Mm -mm. Okay. Oh, kind of. Yes. And I know we're kind of late. 
Just the Wi-Fi thing, I, I didn't want to totally let that drop. I'm happy to save the discussion for a day where we haven't already talked about so much stuff, but um, the, the hotspot, I sent an email out about, yeah. um, I think we should um, make the Wi-Fi that's at the town clerk's office only accessible with a password mm -hmm. so that people would have to not to make it inaccessible for people but so that people have to at least go in and request it um because i don't know i could be wrong about this it those the the elements of <laughs> people great, 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 this that are hanging out. out there um that really shouldn't be there and are kind of like scary um i think wi-fi is part of what's drawing them there maybe not the only thing but it would It'd be interesting to take that away from them for a bit and just see if it makes a difference. Did, did, didn't Skip look into that? I thought yeah, he not did. That I know. Not that we, not that the town hall, but not the town Yeah, not that he looked into it because the whatever the organization was that gave us the Wi-Fi had something to do with whether or not we could, you know, change the hours and make it only a. I don't think that matters. Eight to five like, or something. I don't think that matters because they're there during work they hours. They're here. It doesn't yeah. even distract them. Doesn't them. Like, oh, they don't work here. Yeah. 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 And then they leave. So like that, the timing mm -hmm. thing, I don't think is as much of an issue. Oh, but password protection not. seems fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Oh, we just put a note in there that says, you know, come check in with the town clerk and receive your password. So would would they have to each have their own specific password? Or? I mean, it'll get around, it'll get around pretty fast, yeah, I'm sure. Really. But at least it's one more barrier potentially. And I know some passwords, some places change their password, and I don't know how complicated that is. But like every week, like, uh, for a hotspot, that would have to be skipped from Marisani. Yeah. yeah, it's a shame because the reason we put that in there was for people who don't have. Right. Wi-Fi at home. They do use it. But it's being taken it's advantage being of. Abused. In, yeah. I don't know, no, like, Randy, that's just my idea, but you're one of the people who's dealing with it in a more direct way. Like, I don't know your thoughts on... Oh, it's definitely. Be worth trying? That's their whole key. They'll either drop somebody off at the office mm -hmm. at nighttime, especially Tuesday nights, mm -hmm. to watch the road while they go to their drug deal that's and come back and pick them up. I, and it's all by... Texting. Mm -hmm. I went through a situation the other day and I was like pretty sure I saw the, the truck, the nice truck with the New York plates that's right. probably doing the job and then somebody down at the town hall on their phone watching. Watching. That's mm -hmm. kind of what I figured it was. Really? I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not a detective, mm -hmm. but. Mm -hmm. um, no, it's exactly what they're doing. Mm -hmm. It's pretty overt. Mm -hmm. It's not stupid. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't think they. I guess we don't need to be sneaky. There's no, There's no cops. police. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's look into it. Okay. We'll talk to Skip. Okay. And see if Skip can help us. Mm -hmm. Ready to set some of to you? Yeah. And then we'll just see what we can do. Okay. Thank you. It may slow him down a little. But I mean, it's not gonna, it's, it's, this else, is not a solution, but, but it maybe it's just. Right. And I still have yet to. to um, the drug enforcement is going to be meeting with me. So, oh. what's this day? Drug enforcement is going to what? Be meeting with me. Oh. Washington County handed it over to the drug patrol. So, oh. is that like a division of the state police or something? Or what is it? No, it's a specific so that um, any stings or. Um, or coordinating. So, uh, activities that we have on camera. Yeah. Um, regular cars that I can know exactly. Yeah, I mean, I think so I many... I can let them know. Um, that's great, because so many um, neighbors, like, we we see all of it, and if there was one person willing to just sit and take in the information, I think mm -hmm. they'd have everything they need right, right there. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. The... 522 meeting of the Woodbury Select Board at 8.40 p.m. Mm -hmm. All right. Second. Uh, Tina's still here. Yes. Yeah. I'll make the motion. Um, on my, my eyes are off. I'm making the motion. Second <laughs> <laughs> the motion. Yeah. All those in favor. All right. Bye. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>